The non-conference warm-ups are over. The run for the Roses officially begins today for Arizona State and California. The Sun Devils' next three games are against the best the Pac-10 has to offer, and they're ready to show everyone that they are among the conference elite. Their defense has featured a sack attack that's the best in the nation. On the other side of the ball, quarterback Rudy Carpenter has won seven of the eight games he started in his career. ASU faces a Cal team that's trying to erase memories of a rocky start to their season. Since getting whacked by Tennessee, the Bears have posted two lopsided victories with offensive weapons like running back Marshawn Lynch and wide receiver Deshaun Jackson. Cal should give the ASU defense their toughest test of the season. Caution, Bears get angry when prodded with a hot poker. Pac-10 football is next on FSN. Would have loved it. What a day in the San Francisco Bay Area, and what a day for the Pac-10 Conference opener here at soon to be redone Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. Yeah, there's a few Arizona State fans, but they're gonna have 50,000 California fans rooting against them. It's the Kyocera Pac-10 game of the day. The Arizona State Sun Devils and the California Golden Bears. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my partner, my pal, Petros Papadakis, and uh, Petros, these two coaches agree. They've both been on a road test, if you will, for the past three weeks. Both have done pretty well, but both agree we're going to find out how good we are today. Where would you rather be other than this bastion of progressive thought, Strawberry Canyon, Berkeley, California? Both these teams have BCS aspirations. Only one is going to leave today with a realistic view of that. One of these teams got to win. It's a battle to stay atop the Pac-10. Both these teams also have a quarterback that can get the job done, but can they get it done under the pressure of a Pac-10 conference opener Nate Longshore I like Nate Longshore he's accurate he's the kind of quarterback that Jeff Tedford likes he had a rocky start at Tennessee but you know what he wasn't as bad as he looked on film he made the right reads and he's got a great running back to give the ball to and take some pressure on him that is Heisman Trophy candidate Marshawn Lynch he is just an awesome back look at that average it's unbelievable and it's seven yards for his career he can beat you he can run over you he can run by you I love Marshawn Lynch he's great to watch Rudy Carpenter won the job in training camp stepped in last year when Sam Keller got hurt and boy did he come through Rudy Carpenter is a great football player and he is the quintessential gunslinger for a state at quarterback he runs well he throws best on the run he's not afraid to make any throw out there on the field and he is the guy to lead this team he is most definitely the leader of the Sun Devils and this is a guy that is going to come out here today with a lot of pressure on him because of the Sam Keller situation Sam Keller is gone Rudy Carpenter has got to keep putting up big numbers to keep everybody in Tempe happy and he says what California tries to do is get you to beat them with a the forward pass if you're going to beat him he says you know what that's perfectly fine with me. Should be a great one. Sun Devils and Bears. Next. Over 45 million people love DirecTV. Presented by Kyocera, the new value frontier. And brought to you in part by the David Buster Power Combo, a full-sized entree and a $10 game card. Great food, great games, great price. Eat, drink, play. Buy Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. And by the new ultimate cheese snacker from KFC. Your dollar goes further at KFC. Welcome back to Strawberry Canyon. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis alongside California Golden Bears taking the field. Before the home crowd here, it'll be a near sellout crowd once more at Memorial Stadium to do battle with visitors from Tempe, Arizona, the Arizona State Sun Devils. With more, let's meet the third member of our broadcast cast team. He is the only Jimmy Watson. Waddy. All right, Barry, thanks very much. You know, Arizona State is undefeated, but they still don't know what kind of defense they have. This was a dreadful bunch last year, ranked 114th in the country. Ah, oh, but things have changed. They are deeper, they are quicker, and they're playing with confidence, allowing just 13 points a game. And they piled up 18 sacks. That's number one in the nation for the first three weeks. And the attitude has improved as well. Jordan Hill is one of the leaders of this defense. He said at the beginning of the year, hey, last year our offense was great, one of the best in the country. Our defense was at the bottom of that list. We took it personally, it was embarrassing. 
and they set out to win some games. They've already done it. They've looked great over the first three weeks. But let me point out, those first three weeks, Northern Arizona and Nevada and Colorado does match, not match up to the next three weeks with USC Oregon and the California Bears. So Arizona State is 3-0, but for their defense, their road to redemption starts right here today in Strawberry Canyon. Yeah, thanks, Wani. That's their first test, of course, here at Strawberry Canyon, and it is going to be a tough next three weeks. P, let's talk about the Pacific Life keys to success. Well, for Arizona State, they have to control that run. Cal's got the two best running backs in the Pac-10 and Forsett and Lynch. Those guys cannot get off today, getting 10 yards a pop, and they have got to get to Nate Longshore, welcoming him, him into Pac-10 play. For Cal, they got to eliminate the vertical passing lanes. They have to let Rudy Carpenter know he's playing in the Pac-10 again, and they have to get their backs going. Lynch, Forsett, these guys have to control and set the pace and set the tone and the tempo of this game for the Golden Bears. Sun Devils won the toss, and they opted to take the ball. And you don't see that very much anymore, but they want to be on offense first. Should point out something, too. Guys in the studio talked about Rudy Burgess and what an effect he could have on this game. He'll have to do it from 600 miles away because he is not here. He has a neck injury, will not play today. This is going to be Richardson about two yards deep. Gets the 10, got a little alley to the 20, to the 23, and is absolutely cracked by the California Golden Bears. There on the tackle was Justin Forsett. 25 yard return. And the Sun Devils will start at the 23 yard line. Here are the lineups and quarterback, Rudy Carpenter. We talked about him, only his senior season at Westlake. Stepped in as a freshman at ASU, did an unbelievable job. Herring will get the start, but he does have a hamstring problem. So we don't expect to see him a whole lot. It is a good and effective offensive line led by Andrew Carnahan. First offensive snap. Carpenter going up on first down, got a man, and unable to hang on was Richardson. Let's take a look at the lineups defensively for the California Golden Bears. And this is a very good California defense. Both these teams very good defensively. Maafala with Malele, Mibane, and Tafizi. Mibane, the All-American candidate, double teamed on almost every snap. Mickey Pimentel is going to get the start today ahead of Justin Moy at linebacker. Damian Hughes, an All-American candidate. Sid Pond Thompson will be an interesting guy to watch in this game. He is just a freshman. Give this time for the first time is to DeWitty. Make it Ryan Terrain. So Keegan Herring is not on the field. And we don't know how much he is going to play today. He does have a hamstring problem. Herring did start the game, and they went play action out of that. Almost got the ball to Terry Richardson for a nice gain, a little high by Rudy Carpenter. But now they're trying to get the run game going as Arizona State, and they have to keep Cal at least a little bit honest with the run so they can get those passing lanes opened up that we talked about. Third down and seven. Exactly the situation that Rudy Carpenter told us he does not want to be in. There's show blitz, then back out of it. Deep drop for Carpenter. Now he's going to have to bail out of it. Throws underneath, and there's the tight end, Zach Miller. If not the best tight end in America, find me another one. Definitely the finest in the conference, no question. And he always seems to be in the right spot. Zach Miller is not a burner. He's not a guy that flies around. But Rudy Carpenter knows how to get open, find a throwing lane, and get it to him. Desmond Bishop on the tackle. Desmond Bishop's a great leader for the Cal defense, but he is not going to be able to stay with Zach Miller, who is just unbelievable. Got great hands, uses his body well, best tight end around. So the first down just short of the 40-yard line. Okay, he goes in motion and a give this time and straight ahead. That's Terrain and Terrain's going to be close to another first down. I believe he's going to have it at midfield. We're not going to see Terrain break any kind of 50 yard run in this football game. He's a big kid, 260 pounds, six foot, but he is not a burner, more of a slashing running back. 163 yards coming into this game and he is getting most of the carries, like we said, because Keegan Herring, a very talented sophomore back, has a little bit of a hammy problem. We saw him in the game, but Terrain is good at getting upfield and gaining yardage to help Rudy Carpenter out and open up that passing game. Dimitri Nance, the freshman, now the running back. So already, ASU has played four running backs. The ball right at midfield. Play fake, Carpenter rolling right. Got all day to throw it. Now he's being pursued. Runs out of time and will get out of bounds after a pickup of about two at the 48-yard line. Mickey Pimentel was coming hard at him. 
And Mickey Pimentel got the start in this game at the strong side linebacker over Justin Moy. Cal has about six or seven linebackers that are going to play in this football game and just didn't give up on the play. You see Rudy Carpenter, a man who can really roll out and look. He never gives up on a play. It doesn't matter how close to the line of scrimmage he is. But Pimentel stayed with it. Only a short game for the Sun Devils. And Pimentel got the start today because of that speed. Terrain back in at the running back spot now. Two tight ends, two wide outs. Play fake. Carpenter going up again. Now he throws and throws it too wide. Intended that time for McGahey. Good protection up front as Carpenter has uh, not been in a whole lot of trouble. And as you pointed out, he likes to, run, to uh, get out of there and throw on a move. Well, you saw there he dropped back, and that was the situation where he's not very comfortable just dropping back and throwing in the pocket. But that offensive line is doing a great job. And they've really found the right mix on this ASU team on offense and defense. They got the right mix of young guys and old guys and leaders and really talented players. Three wideouts now, slot left on third and seven. Straight back Carpenter throws, got a man. It's caught by Richardson and a first down at the 38-yard line of the Bears. So two big third down plays on this drive. Well, you saw Rudy very patient there, dropping back. Again, not his most comfortable spot on the field. Just a nice five-step drop. Only, yeah, just a five-step drop, and he sees Richardson coming across on the drive route. He had Miller underneath there. He chooses Richardson over Miller, just like the first play of the game, but this time the ball was right on the money, and Richardson able to haul it in. Sid Quan Thompson playing a little soft that time. It was well off of Richardson. First down at the 37-yard line of the Bears. DeWitty the running back. Carpenter straight back again. Steps up, throws incomplete. That was just a little bit of a communications gap, I think, there between Mike Jones, the intended receiver. I think Carpenter thought it was going to be a hitch and go, and Jones thought it was a hitch. Either that or he slipped on his double move. Double moves are a big part of college football, and they can get corners to bite, especially Damian Hughes, a very aggressive corner, probably the best corner on the West Coast. And you saw Mike Jones trying to come out of that double move, just slips down. The ball was there. But where was Mike Jones? Might have been a touchdown. That single coverage out there. Terrain back into the running back spot. The stack receivers to the right side. Now they're bringing man in motion. And this is Terrain. He gets a little gap. 35-30. Gets that on the 25, down to the 21-yard line, and another Sun Devil first down. A pickup of 16. Terrain, a junior, he's been hanging around for a while, out of Kansas, getting a nice block from Fanica, his right guard, getting the start over Steven Berg. And you can see him just finding a little spot in that California defense, a tough Cal defense, able to creep in there. Tenth play of the drive upcoming. Terrain has picked up 30 yards on the ground, sitting in for Keegan Herrick. First down at the 21-yard line of the Bears. Bears showing a nine-man front here. And the game is to Terrain, gets a great block, gets down inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. And that was Andrew Carnahan, the senior, who led the way in a nine-man front shown by the Bears. Well, whenever you get into a nine-man front, you see all this space. It's there. All you can see is the end zone. There's no Cal player there. Now, there's one hiding there, but that's a very dangerous situation when you get in that bare defense and show them a nine-man front where you have a center and both guards covered. Once that running back breaks the line of scrimmage, he can go all the way, and Tedford knows his team dodged a bullet there. That could have been a touchdown. Second down and three. This time Lewis goes in motion. Give the terrain again. Nice block by Lewis. Terrain will have a first down inside the 10 yard line. And the Sun Devils absolutely doing everything right on the offensive end on this drive. They're looking good right now because they're running the football well and they're getting terrain going on that offensive line going forward. Now, if this continues as a trend throughout the first half, it does not bode well for California because everybody knows Arizona State's strength is with the quarterback and that passing game and getting down the field to the tight end. If they can get the run game going, then their pass will get going in the second quarter and into the second half. And Cal's going to have to score a lot of points to keep up. Five carries, 42 yards for Ryan Terrain on this drive. Slot left this time with Lewis in the slot. There's a swing pass to Terrain. Terrain gets it to the five, steps into the end zone. And let's see if that's a touchdown it is. Officials taking a look to see if he stepped out of bounds. He did not. It is an Arizona State touchdown. 
on a drive that was an absolute thing of beauty. Beautiful play. They kept sucking everybody in with terrain, and they just ran what is called a fire screen and got terrain out there. Just a real quick hitting swing pass. They sucked in the ends, and terrain was able to tiptoe that sideline. Very nice footwork. And the forearm from Desi Bishop a little late. Touchdown, Sun Devils. Ainsworth to try the point. And that was an extremely efficient drive on the first possession of the game. Ainsworth drives it through, and just like that, the Sun Devils have taken a 7-0 lead, a drive that took 4 minutes and 4 seconds and was absolutely terrific. I mean, they made no mistakes. What do you value? Forward first, Cal hasn't had the ball yet. They'll get it in just a moment. That last pass, nothing fancy about it, but uh, Terrain taking it in, as you see, he ran for 42 yards on the drive and replacing Herring, and uh, I don't know what you can say about that other than perfect. Yeah, they look great, especially running the football. They were patient with Rudy Carpenter. They didn't really try to go downfield. They got the ball to the tight end a little bit, and just one drop pass in the drive. Other than that, Arizona State coming out with a real sense of purpose and throwing a very, very efficient and nice fire screen. You see Zach Follett coming in off the edge at the Will linebacker on a blitz and just completely loses track of terrain. And Andrew Carnahan is out here, one of the finest right tackles in all of the Pac-10 out front blocking and just a very easy play. They walled off everybody in terrain, able just to tiptoe in there. A beautiful drive and well executed by Arizona State. And it says a lot for a team playing on the road in a Pac-10 open. Well, and Dirk Cutter told us yesterday, he said it's really important to get out of the blocks so early. Kind of keep the crowd out of the game as much as you can. It's going to be Marcus O'Keefe at about the two-yard line. Gets the 15, gets a little gap, gets the 25 to the 30. Caught from behind as he gets the 35-yard line by Zach Katniss. Return of 33 yards as we take a look at the Kyocera starting lineups for the California Golden Bears. Nate Longshore will be the quarterback, really only playing in about his third game uh, when you consider the injury last year. Marshawn Lynch will get the start at running back. Byron Storer starts at tight end, although Craig Stevens is available today. The offensive line is a patchwork offensive line with Tepper and Gibson getting the starts at the tackle spots. A lot of injuries, we'll tell you more about that. Trips right on first down. Marshawn Lynch gets the call, picks up five to the 40 yard line. Might have gotten across the 40 where Dexter Davis puts the stop on him for the Devils. Defensively for Arizona State. And you heard Jimmy Watson talk about how effective they've been. 18 sacks, but I think what's really impressive about that, they've come from 12 different people. Darren Ware, the Bears love him in terms of his speed. They don't love to play against them, but they sure like what he does. Second down at five. Longshore will throw. A little pump fake, almost a pick. Very close that time as Josh Barrett. Or make that Darren Ware, Deron Ware almost jumped the route. Now Cal's got to be careful. They got to be really careful here because they can't afford to have their offense sputter. They need at least one first down here, not just to answer Arizona State, but at the same time to get their defense a little rest. And Tedford checking out that big wristband he always wears, trying to find a third down play to help out his young quarterback. Coming a slot right. Longshore straight back. Got a throw and overthrew his intended receiver, who was Robert Jordan. He had a step on a fade route, but Longshore just didn't get it to him. Well, you look at Cal offensively right now, and right now they have to punt, and that is a bad deal for Cal. They do not want to give the ball back to Rudy Carpenter, who's looking like Merlin the Magician right now on the road. Deshaun Jackson runs a 4-2-9-4, a legit one. Robert Jordan runs a 4-3. Marshawn Lynch and Justin Forsett are the two of the best backs in the country, let alone the Pac-10. If they can just find Nate Longshore a comfort zone to get these guys all the ball, Cal's going to be okay, but right now they've got to give it up. Andrew Larson, first-year punter on for California. He's been affected. This one could be returned. Look out, it's a line drive. Richardson handles it, 19-yard line. Great open field tackle that time. And, and he had been able to slip by Marcus Ezef. He might have gone a long way. Seven to nothing, Sun Devils. We'll be back. Head over. Nothing. And Arizona State will get it back. Let's take a look at Dave and Buster's 
leaderboards, and uh, they did this themselves, David Buster, and I think they do darn nice work, <laughs> don't you? A couple great guys. USC. Talk about having a good time. They're up there. They were drawing this stuff up early this morning when we got here. California and Arizona State, as you see, other than USC, the two most effective teams in the Pac-10 conference. Wow. The men of Troy. Ooh. That's a tough one on the schedule every year for everybody in the Pac-10. But right now, these teams have really got to figure it out. And when I'm talking about teams, I'm talking about Cal because A-State has got them right where they want them. Dirk Cutter, incidentally, is 0-10 in California versus Pac-10 team. So he's got his team ready. I don't think he likes that record very much. Going out of the eye formation here on the first snap. They'll start at the 17-yard line. And this is DeWitty. And DeWitty slips by the first wave of tacklers again and picks up about four. Warrell Williams comes up, makes a stop for California. John DeWitty, just a sophomore, about the same size as Terrain. He's also a bigger back, and you saw him. Two hands on the ball, doesn't want to fumble. Got the five yard. And that's a great way for Arizona State to start. I mean, they're really starting to look efficient offensively with Rudy Carpenter running them. And he was very efficient last year, but a few mistakes early in the season had some people shrugging their shoulders. He looks great so far today. Second down and six. Four yards on first down. Almost anybody will take that. Here's Terrain again, left side. And he is cracked. But again, Terrain gets it up close to a first down. Thomas Deku came up and, and really cracked him. But that first wave of tacklers for the Bears has been invisible. Yeah, because the left side of that Arizona State line is doing great. Brandon Rod, Robert Gustavus really making a nice edge along with Zach Miller. And check out this hit in Exmo. Coming up and making the play, Thomas Takut, who's leading the California team in tackles with 23 coming into this game. A nice hit, but if Takut's going to make all your tackles five yards down the field, that's not going to be good enough. That's right. It's another first down for the Sun Devils. Play fake this time. Carpenter to throw. He's got all day. Throws into coverage this time. Overthrows everybody. And it's fun to watch Rudy Carpenter because he's such a nonchalant kind of quarterback. And he does have a kind of a sideways throwing motion, not all the way sidearm like uh, young, young Kim or something. But, you know, he gets it at an angle out there and he just kind of has a very leisurely way of, of letting go of the ball. It looks like he has more of a sense of urgency when he's on the run, but he drops back there, it almost looks like, like he's playing in a sandlot. Yeah, he called it a long throwing motion. We asked him about it yesterday. Second down and 10. Zach Miller splits to the far side. That's a tough cover. Straight back Carpenter over the middle for a clear out. It's caught this time underneath by McGahey. And McGahey, and a late flag comes in. McGahey will be close to a first down. And this flag came in very late, and it was thrown by the field judge. And I think this is going to negate a gain of nine yards. They may have gotten the Devils on a pick here. It is going against the Sun Devils. There's Dirk Cutter. Dirk, an intense guy when it comes uh, <laughs> to game day and the day before. Illegal block in the back on the offense, number 16. The 10 yard penalties from the end of the run, second down. Nate Kimbrough is the guilty party. Here's a look. You'll see it in the lower left. Kimbrough coming yeah. in on the play and just taking out Sid Quan Thompson in the back. And that was a good play. Had the hand right on the number five. McGehe, nice play by Arizona State. Beautiful. They got Zach Miller wided out, cleared out that area, and brought McGehe underneath. Now, the net net of all of that is really a minus about a half a yard, and we'll do it all over again. So it's second and 11. Here's Terrain. Terrain again breaks by the first wave of tacklers and is stopped as he crosses the 35 and the 37. Again, good blocking up front. Zach Miller that time with a key block. And this is a very proud Cal defense, especially this defensive line. And they cannot afford to have Ryan Terrain, a second string back for the Sun Devils, getting through the first wave of tacklers for the Bears. You see the Bears fit up pretty nice, but there's a hole. And that offensive line is doing a great job of getting creases for Terrain to run through. And so far, Terrain has made all the right decisions with the football. It's a gain of 10 and another first down. Gain of 12, I should say, in the first down. 
Sun Devils have been very impressive offensively. First down right at the 40 yard line. Here's Terrain on the draw play straight ahead. Across the 45 to the 47. And the Bears front four just getting nothing done. Here's what ASU has done rushing the football. It's been something of a problem for them, but not so far today. Well, Rudy Burgess, who's a wide receiver now and not on this trip with a neck injury, used to be the tailback a couple years ago, and he was always a converted wide receiver. He even played some corner for this team. Last year, Keegan Herring came in as a freshman, and he took a lot of the load. They just haven't had a lot of bodies, but this year they have four guys that are all putting up a pretty good average, and right now Ryan Terrain is looking very good, very strong. Here's that nine-man front again by the Bears. And here's Terrain. Terrain this time is stopped and a flag comes in. Thomas DeCou filled a gap that time and stopped the play for no gain. Now we'll see about the penalty. And it is going to be against Arizona State. Let's go to the sidelines once more. Jim Watson basking in the sun. Yeah, and it is nice down here, Barry. All these penalties already on Arizona State, they just got to be grinding at Cutter. They're 3-0, and but they have 23 penalties and eight turnovers. And Cutter said that's the big story for this team coming in. The offensive line has nine penalties in the last two games, and he thinks there's a national trend by defensive coordinators. And Petros, you can help me out here. They, the whole defensive line will yell, move, and if they all move at once, then it's not a defensive penalty. One guy moves, it's a penalty. If they all move together, it is not a penalty. And Cutter was joking around and said he thinks all the defensive prevention, maybe at Hamburger Hamlet and Encino, <laughs> to try to work this thing out. Well, definitely a defense will try to yell and get you a little screwed up on the count. And on offense, you just have to know your quarterback's voice. Carpenter straight back. He has to step up. He throws deep and overthrows everybody. Richardson, the intended receiver. And now it'll be third down and long. Now, third downs have not been any kind of an issue at all so far for ASU. Well, this is a little bit different now. Cal got in that nine-man front and finally did something to Ryan Terrain where he did not get positive yardage. They were able to stop him with Dekoud way up on the line of scrimmage. That set Arizona State back along with the penalty. Here they are, another third down. This will be demoralizing to the California defense if Rudy Carpenter can convert this one. Third down and 13. They like to screen in this situation. Whether or not they do it will be interesting to see. DeWitty is the lone running back. Quick toss on a slant this time and a catch made by Kimbrough, but it's going to be well short of the first down. Damian Hughes right in his grill. This time the Sun Devils will have to give it up. And I'm not sure I like that call a whole bunch. I mean, Nate Kimbrough's a pretty good receiver, and he's a versatile guy, and Rudy Carpenter's going to throw that ball on the money every time, just a slant route. But you got Damian Hughes on it. And if Damian Hughes lets that man make the catch, Damian Hughes is one of the finest corners in the country. He knows exactly where he is on the field. He knows where the sticks are. He's going to make that play. He's not going to allow you to get a first down. And now Cal's coming back with the football. They have a chance on offense. Jonathan Johnson to do the punting. Sean, Deshaun Jackson will be the deep man for California. And he's going to let this bounce, and it will skip into the end zone. 53-yard punt, but it would have been more effective for ASU for a 50-yard punt. The Bears will have it at the 20-yard line, trailing 7 to nothing. 5.41 left, first quarter. Offside it appears to make an understatement. Well, the cannon hasn't fired for the Golden Bears yet. 20 plays Arizona State has, Cal has three. 126 yards Arizona State has, Cal has five. First downs, seven to nothing. Needless to say, the Bears got to get something going. Tedford's frustrated. Got to be. I mean, he is considered the offensive guru, but for that matter, so is Dirk Cutter. He's out guruing him right now. Yes. Richards this time to Lynch. Lynch gets by the first man. I'll tell you what. First guy, when was the last time you saw the first guy tackle Marshawn Lynch? You know, he reminds me a little bit of Deshaun Foster because Marshawn Lynch has a way of kind of lurching his way down the field. He's fast, but also when guys get on him, there's something about his body just lurching forward for more yardage. It's Zach Cadenese, who's a good tackler with the tackle, but you look at Cadenese, doesn't give up on the play, and he does a good job, but Lynch just knows how to fight for more yardage, and there's just a certain way that guys fall off him when they try to tackle him. He right. just kind of sheds them. Picked up 10, and the first California first down. Starting to go out of the gun. And then Hawkins 
to the near side. And this is Hawkins at the 40-yard line. Slips a man still in his feet. Gets the midfield. Stiff arms a man. Gets to the 48-yard line. Right now, let's head you to our college football Saturday studio. Keo Sarah game break with Mike Goldberg. Mike. Barry, thank you very much. We'll begin in Tallahassee, number 17, Florida State hosting Rice. Florida State still, wow, they're still smarting from their third loss in four games to Clemson. They do lead Rice 14 to 7. Meantime in the horseshoe, Penn State's defense outstanding. Shutting down Ohio State in the first quarter, scoreless early in the second. All right, thank, thanks very much, Mike. We'll be getting back to our studio on numerous occasions keep your rest of what's happening he's 18 on that last pass play longshore again throws and some catches made this time by robert jordan and now it's the bears that are moving to football and made longshore start to calm down and relax in there never really got a chance to settle down it was three and out in their very first series keno walter white on the coverage there of robert jordan they have great skill players it's just a matter of getting them the football and jeff tedford said Nate longshore was calm and relaxed in tennessee even though he didn't look that great on film they weren't very disappointed with his performance he is the starting quarterback and got the ball beautifully there to robert jordan slot left this time with hawkins in the slot and a give is to lynch and lynch this time will cut it inside and pick up about three pursuit that time by the devils Bo Manatai, first man to him. I'm going to say only a gain of two. It was second down and eight. And right now, if Cal could get positive yardage with Marshawn Lynch on first down, they're going to be in good shape as long as their defense can stop the Arizona State run. They just have to continue to feed their superstar the ball and then get it out to their wide receiver. Out of the gun once more. Second down and eight. Longshore going to go up. Here's a quick pass to Lynch. Lynch had a little trouble getting started. Did get some blocking in front and does get it inside the 25-yard line. Close to first down. Keno Walter White made the tackle. That was not really any kind of a thing of beauty, but somehow it worked. Well, you get the ball to Marshawn Lynch, and it's always going to work more often than not. Cal said, hey, you ran a fire screen on us. We're going to run the same on you. They get Kyle Caldwell to come after Longshore at defensive end. Ball is not actually on the money. It turns Marshawn around a lot, but he's so good and so athletic, he's able to turn something out of it. And that's for a first down at the 24-yard line. And they go out of the gun again. Quick toss over the middle of the tight end. Begum and Begum will have another California first down at the 13. Now that is Cal's spread offense work. Cal does a kind of a hybrid now of the Jeff Tedford offense, which is a two back, and this spread, shotgun with one back, just a nice quick hitting slant right over the middle, almost an outlet route to Begum. Ball's right on the money, and right now Nate Longshore looking a lot more accurate than he has. He'll go under center this time. Ball at the 13-yard line. Here's Lynch straight ahead. Gets it down inside the 10. Ball's forward to about the 9-yard line. A pickup of close to 5 yards on the play. You see how the whole game can turn on a penalty? It's amazing, isn't it? Arizona State getting a holding penalty. They're moving the ball great. Got a holding penalty on a run play. Forced to punt. And now Cal back on the field at home, starting to calm down and getting the ball to their superstar. Justin Forsett in the ball game for the first time for California. A guy that Jeff Tetford just speaks about in glowing terms. Mark Short throws to Forsett. He's got a little room at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Bears. Maybe that's why he likes it. Justin Forsett's a guy they like to get out on the perimeter. He's a junior and a great back. Probably be starting anywhere else in the Pac-10, but he plays behind Marshawn Lynch, and that gives Cal a great duo. That, again, is a fire screen. We've seen three of them in this football game, and Forsett with a lot of area, a lot of space to work with, and you don't want to give a man like that a lot of space to work with. The kid out of Texas takes it to the house. Schneider tried the extra point to tie the game. He gets it up and gets it through. 2.51 remaining here in the first quarter. We're tied at seven. In the first period, now California will give it back to Arizona State. Richardson and McGay, hey, the deep end. Here you see the scoring drive and just kick 
He is going to be taken by Richardson about a yard deep. He comes out again to the 5 to the 10. He can go. And not this time. Stopped at the 17-yard line by the Bears. Zach Follett once again on the stop. Poor Forsetti just scores a touchdown and has to run down on a kickoff. Here's what happened. The Bears had the perfect play call because you're going to see Arizona State run a stunt. These guys are all stuck inside. And look at all this space in the perimeter for Justin Forsett. You don't want to give a guy like that that much space to work with. But Tedford called the right play with his offensive coordinator. Touchdown. Mike Dunbar, who joined the team from Northwestern, he was uh, responsible for the offense at Northwestern for the last several years, which I thought was a heck of an offense to watch. Beautiful, and they're mixing it up very well. I think they found a nice balance between what Tedford did, which was that beautiful, very regular two-back offense to this spread. Give straight ahead to DeWitty this time, nothing doing. And all of a sudden, there's defense digging in a little bit. Loss of the yard on first down. Cal with seven first downs on eight plays on that drive, looking very strong, and now Arizona State has a chance to answer. Now, dare I say that we might be in for another classic Pac-10 shootout I, between two fine teams. You're sure looking that way. And it's not about the defense. It's not to say that either defense isn't good. It's just that sophistication on offense. Very sophisticated offense, both these teams. And of course, kind of a for that in history, both with the offensive coordinator for Mike Milani up at Oregon. Play fake this time. Carmen will go up. He's got time. He throws. Comebacker. And the catch is made this time. And thrown out of bounds immediately was Nate Kimbrough. And Nate Kimbrough is a guy that is pretty tight with Rudy Carpenter. And I'll tell you why. He caught Rudy's first touchdown pass last year. Caught seven balls last year, actually, with just that one touchdown. But this year, they're asking him to do more. He's a versatile receiver. He can come inside, he can come outside. They like to slot him, and that time, perfectly timed ball. Rudy Carpenter getting more comfortable, dropping back in that pocket, gets him the football, and that's a good first down for Arizona State. Takes some pressure off their defense. Taking a little advantage of Sid Quan Thompson, the freshman in the corner here on the near side for California. Play fake again. Look out. Carpenter unloads it. Pulls the span to it that time <laughs> was Mike Pollock, the center. Justin Moy was coming hard for the Bears. Mike Pollock doesn't want to see that, have to duck his head from a screen pass from his quarterback. No. He'll dream at night about catching that and taking it to the house. Well, the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com, where you'll find thousands of name brand products and savings up to 70% every day of the week. Overstock.com. Second down and 10 at the 30-yard line. Now Carpenter directing a little traffic here. Now they move Miller outside. That is Zach Miller. Look out. Carpenter in trouble. And I would have thought they might have said he was down, but I guess his knee never touched, so he manages to tuck it away and pick up about two yards. Zach Follett was coming hard. Had him wrapped up. Only to have Carpenter just escape. Well, Zach Follett is unblocked coming off the edge, and Rudy can kind of feel him, starts to step up. But what an athletic play by Rudy Carpenter. Desmond Bishop ends up making the play, but look at this in Exmo. Follett leaves his feet, grabs Rudy Carpenter, and the knee nowhere near touching. <laughs> what an athletic and very savvy play. Rudy didn't see that guy, but he just felt it. Heck of a play. Dewitty now is the setback. Here's that nine-man front shown by the Bears once again. Now they back out of it a little bit. Third down and seven. Big play here. Carpenter straight back. In trouble and wrapped out. Lose the football. Ball's loose. And let's see who's got it. The Bears say they do. And they do. California recovers. And to make matters even worse, Rudy Carpenter comes out limping. Carpenter is limping pretty decidedly as he comes to the sideline. Zach Follett was the guy who put the hit on Carpenter, and Desmond Bishop picked up the fumble. Zach Follett, normally a special team zealot for the Berkeley Bears, coming in and living in the Arizona State backfield on those two plays, jumping up, leaving his feet again, kind of breaking a rule of all defensive linemen, but ends up with the sack staying after Carpenter, and the ball gets loose. Rudy landed on his knee awkwardly, but Seems to be walking it off down there on the side. Yeah, did not go to the bench, and that's significant. Longshore looking long. And throws, and the catch is made brilliantly by Hawkins for a California touchdown. What a catch by 
by Lavelle Hawkins. And a beautiful throw by Nate Longshore. Cal told us with their offensive coordinator, Dunbar, that they were going to take their shots. And right after a turnover, why not take a shot? One-on-one -on -one coverage, try on. Just getting beat, and what a beautiful throw. That was the only place Longshore could have put it that it would have been caught. Lavelle Hawkins, the junior, with a touchdown. And now, Cal's starting to get it work. And the try for point by Schneider is up, and it is good. And just like that, that the Bears have their first six, and they lead Arizona State by seven, 14 to seven. Just saying Stockton, baby. Also came out of City College of San Francisco, a great program there. But that jump from JC to D1, never an easy thing. And he did struggle a little bit last year. Seems to have it all going right now. Well, D1 didn't work for him once. He started his career at LSU and then went to the City College. But he's become comfortable here at Cal under Tedford. And he's always been a very nice compliment to the other receivers that time, taking it out there and really becoming the showcase man on that one. Richardson coming out from about two yards deep again. Tries to get the outside. Now look out. Hurdles a man and is finally stopped that time as he crossed the 20-yard line by Justin Moy. And you see Cal just moving Longshore a little bit on a half roll. There was no question where they wanted to go with the ball, and that wouldn't have been a touchdown in the NFL, but thank God. This is the NCAA, and these guys are able to express themselves. Lavelle Hawkins with one foot in. Not bad coverage, but just a very nice throw. And Lavelle Hawkins with a great athletic catch. Longshore after a tough first series, 6 of 8, 96 yards, and two touchdowns. So now it's back to Rudy Carp. And they gave us the terrain right in his face that time is Mickey Pimentel. So perhaps the Bears have adjusted here. Well, they've started to bring a lot more people on the blitz. They're starting to try to confuse the run of Arizona State with some run stunts. And they've also gotten to Rudy Carpenter not once, but twice in a row, the second time causing a fumble. And that will get, get us to the end of the first period. And what a quarter play on a ton of offense. And California leads it 14 to 7. We'll start the second quarter when we come back to Strawberry Canyon Memorial Stadium in Berkeley on a beautiful day. What do you value? 14 to 7 ball game, California leading. They long short missed his first two passes since then, 6 of 6 for a couple of scores. Now, Rudy Carpenter looking at a second and 12 as we start the second period. This time, Carpenter straight back. Now runs out of time, throws underneath, catches made this time by Mike Jones, and he is absolutely destroyed as he makes the catch by Mickey Pemintal. Let's send you right now to our College Football Saturday studio. A Kiyosara game break with Mike Goldberg. Mike? Bearing number three, Auburn is at home hosting Buffalo. They're coming off that impressive win over LSU. They're already 2-0 in conference play. Kenny Irons get a little bit off. Brad Lester takes it in for the touchdown. Third quarter, and you can cry War Eagle because the Tigers lead 17-0. Auburn just rolling. One of the better teams in America. Ron Gorgeous, or not Ron Gorgeous, but uh, the offensive coordinator for Auburn spent a little time here. There's a throw underneath. This time, and a catch made by Jamal Lewis. His first catch. We go to the sidelines once more. Jim Watson, buddy. Barry, everybody in the stadium saw Rudy Carpenter come up hobbly after that sack and fumble. When he came over to the sidelines, strangely enough, no one, not a trainer, not a coach, not a teammate, even looked at that leg. All they did is drag him straight over to the grease board where Dirk Cutter was waiting. He bit the lid off one of those flares, spit it on the ground, diagrammed the play again, patted him on the head and walked away. So they didn't work on his leg, but they sure worked on his head. <laughs> Thanks very much, Wadi. Once more, a punting situation. This is going to be Deshaun Jackson. He might have a chance here at the 20-yard line. Cuts it back in the middle. Look out. He's at the 30. He can go. He's got the punter to beat at midfield. He may go to the 30, to the 20. Forget about it. Deshaun Johnson. Touchdown, Bears. 80 yards. Deshaun Jackson. about it yet but Deshaun Jackson arguably one of the most exciting players in the Pac-10 and Barry you said he might have a chance right when he got the ball because you know this guy he can really get up the field he's electric Reggie Bush-esque in his ability to return punts 
And you see him, he just attacks you coming forward with all that great speed, 429. And Arizona State didn't have a chance. I don't think anybody got a hand on it. No, no kidding. I mean, that was one of those cases about kicking the coverage. It's just that simple, and he didn't hang the ball up enough. And that allowed Jackson to feel that he was gone. 21 to 7, just underway, second quarter. Full-on sprint right now, Deshaun Jackson, 80 yards and a punt return for a score. It's a 21 to 7 ball game in the blink of an eye. Very quick, at home, and Arizona State looked like they came in here with a real sense of purpose, marched the ball right down the field, but the Cal defense has done things to stifle that A-State run. Three touchdowns in four minutes and 36 seconds for the Bears. I think that constitutes a sprint. I would say that's a flat-out sprint. Here's the kick, an end of a end kick, and it's going to be Richardson at the two-yard line this time. Richardson looks for a gap, right finds now. a gap. He could go two, steps outside, and is finally knocked out of bounds just short of the 40-yard line. On the tackle that time, Marcus Ezef, 37-yard return. Now, speaking of sprinting, I mean, you see Arizona State here. They have pretty good spacing with all their guys, but as it goes, you're going to see Deshaun Jackson finds that little lane, and his ability to see that as it develops is what sets him apart, not only as a guy who's an exciting player, an athletic player, but a guy that's very smart and knows where people are going to be on the field and where they're going to be trying to tackle him and where his blockers are going to be. Just an amazing punt return by Deshaun Jackson. And right now, Cal's working on defense, offense, and special teams. ASU, though, working on a short field. They'll get it at the 40-yard line after the 37-yard kick return by Richardson. Straight back on first down, Carpenter. Airs it out deep for his tight end. It's intercepted and dropped. They say it hit the ground. And I think Bernard Hicks might feel he had a pick. And, and this will be reviewed. I mean, they do review every play. I think this is going to be a close call. Well, one official saying incomplete, and the ref on the sideline is saying it's a pick. You see the nose of the ball hanging out, and that is an incomplete pass. Yes, it is. Yes, Exmo it is. tells no lies. Have a look at it. Or tails for that one. Yep, incomplete pass. But Hicks had the high step going like he did intercept it. He looked good after, yeah. <laughs> And right now, you have to think, is Rudy Carpenter a little bit shaken? The last few balls have been off the mark. Cal's gotten to him. The run game isn't working. He's now 8 of 15, 73 yards. And to give this time to Terrain, who's whacked out of bounds after a gain of a little more than three, maybe four yards on the play. <laughs> Call it a gain of three. It's going to be second down. Make it four. Second down at six. Or the third down at six, I think the part. Sean DeWitty back in the ball game in the running back spot. So this I, I would have to call this a very pivotal play right here for ASU. It is, and that Cal defense is tired. Don't get me wrong, they're happy to have the punt return touchdown, but they're right back on the field. These guys are huffing and puffing. There's no way to avoid it. And they're in the nickel defense right now. Now they send Zach Miller to the outside. Carpenter straight back. And it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Knocked down that time by Abu Mafala. Abu Ma'afala getting blocked on the play, but getting an arm up and batting that ball back in Rudy's face. Incidentally, a transfer from Hawaii, his uncle from the Steelers. Remember him? Chris Fuamatu Ma'afala backed up to Rome Bettis for a while. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> I, I, had, I had it written down, but I wasn't going to touch it. I don't even have it written down. <laughs> well, Jackson, they have another chance here. A wobbly kick. He's not going to have a chance, but... It is going to give the Bears pretty good field position as it's going to go out of bounds up around the 30-yard line. And there's a little woofing going on that the officials tend to immediately. 21-7 Bears, they'll have the ball when we come back. Kyocera Wireless. Take your texting to the next level with the new Kyocera Stroll. Kyocera Wireless will find you to dial responsibly. And brought to you in part by eHarmony.com. Are you ready to fall in love? By Aflac. Ask about it at work. And today's first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Search, shop, and save up to 70% at Overstock.com. We welcome you back. P. You know, we always talk about statistics and how much they mean, or maybe more importantly, how much they don't mean. 
listen to this. So far today, Arizona State has had 31 snaps, California 12. Arizona State's had the ball 13 minutes, 25 seconds. Cal, four minutes, and nine seconds. The Bears lead by 14. Play fake, long short, going for it all. And Jackson's got it at the 23 yard line. 52 yards. Tedford said he wanted to take his shots, and they've taken advantage of both ASU corners. They like to run man, and right now Cal's making him pay. First it was just a try on with Hawkins. Now Deshaun Jackson fresh off a punt return for a touchdown, and I'd be still sucking on oxygen on the sideline. He goes 52 yards and takes advantage of Keno Walter White. Sophomore out of Long Beach Poly. First down now at the 24-yard line. Here's Marshawn Lynch. And Lynch will not get anything. Let's go to the sideline once more. Jim Watson, what? Boy, it is Deshaun Jackson's world. We're all just living in it right now, huh, guys? You mentioned he came out of Long Beach Poly. Of course, Long Beach Poly High School, one of the largest high schools in the country, has produced more NFL products than any other high school in the nation. And when he got here, everybody said this guy could be the best wide receiver in school history. But of course, a lot can happen to a young player over four years. And so far, none of that has happened to Jackson. He had a great freshman campaign, 600 yards, seven touchdowns. And he sidestepped the sophomore slump. Two straight 100-yard games, five touchdown catches, and oh, by the way, an 80-yard vapor trail for a touchdown today. All right, here's another one. It's Marshawn Lynch. Easy score. Eight completions in a row for Longshore, three of them for scores. And right now, Cal is doing what they want. They have their spread offense working. They have their more traditional offense working. And flat out, they're just beating Arizona State one-on-one. -on -one. That was a situation where Marshawn Lynch, just on a swing route, taking it up the sideline, and that's easy. That's practice. That's pat and go. So Schneider to try for the 28th California point, and they have come in a big hurry. 28 to 7 Bears with 11-20 remaining here in the second quarter. Look at this, I mean, this is, uh, you, when you draw it on the board, here's what it looks like. Well, perfect protection. Longshore's throwing it out of an easy recliner. <laughs> Deshaun Jackson running an arrow route, trying to pick a little bit of the linebacker, Robert James. Robert James, very late getting over. He's a pretty fast backer, but nowhere near as fast as Marshawn Lynch. Coverage wasn't there, Nate Longshore wasn't pressured. Very easy play for everybody except for the A-State defense. Well, so far, I mean, after ASU got out of the block so quickly, we said at full sprint. Well, guess what? They're going backward now, and Cal's going forward in the full sprint. Take a look at our U.S. Bank Pac-10 Players of the Week. Dwayne Jarrett, uh, a routine outstanding game for him with 31 touchdowns in his career. It hasn't been that long a career. C.J. Wallace, you know, Washington, I think, really improved, actually. Much better. And Lauren Langley, the Washington State kicker who beat Baylor. Look at that kicker. It looks like a kicker. <laughs> it sure does. Cut your hair, you kicker. <laughs> Crazy long hair. A lot of those up here in Burke. Everybody's a kicker. Oh, I love the long haired guys. You had it. I used to have some long hair myself. I wish I could have it now, but I'm a broadcaster. Here's Richardson again. There's that gap again. And Richardson steps through it again and gets it up to about the 38 yard line. Well, I want to remind you our college football Saturday triple header will continue after our game with the Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the day. It'll be South Florida traveling to Kansas. They'll take on the Jayhawks in the first ever meeting between those two teams. Coverage beginning right after our game here on FSN. Well, Richardson's kick returns have been the offense, if you will, for ASU since that first drive. Ever since the first series and that holding penalty, Needless to say, this is a very important drive. Arizona State has got to try to keep up with Cal and get in that locker room and do some adjusting. Play fake, going to throw it, going to air it out. It's almost picked by Hughes. Hughes' recovery speed was something special right there. Well, Damian Hughes, can't say enough about him at corner. And you like to have a big corner if you're Jeff Tedford to handle all these big receivers in the Pac-10. If there's a guy that can handle him, it's Damian Hughes. Here Hughes comes off his man, sees the ball in the air, and tries to jump right in front of Brent Miller to make that pick, and he should have made the pick. Almost. He had both hands on it. Yeah, he did. And that was not a soft pass. That ball was thrown pretty hard. 
Here's the Bears shifting around defensively again. The good this time is to do it. Forget about it. Desmond Bishop stands him straight up the line of scrimmage. Well, remember that first series that I mean, ASU just didn't blink. Took it right down. Since that time, train wreck. People always talk about halftime adjustments and how coaches go in at halftime and come out with adjustments, especially with a guy like Jeff Tedford, a very talented coach. And Dirk has got some serious adjusting to do at the halftime of this game. But you saw that Tedford's defense under Bob Gregory made adjustments right after that first series and started to stop the run of Arizona State. Here's Carpenter again, flag is down, pump fake, steps up, and throws it away. Now we'll see about the flag, but... I believe this is going to go against the Sun Devil Stewart. If it, if it does, California will refuse it. And it will, and they will. So three and out again for the Devils. And it's not easy to get your bearings, or like Donovan said, get thy bearings on the road, especially in the Pac-10 opener. Rudy Carpenter has got the most Pac-10 experience of the two quarterbacks in this football game. Probably the most Pac-10 experience of anybody in this football game is Joe Ayoub, and he's standing on the sideline. But right now, Nate Longshore playing in his first Pac-10 football game looks the best. Here's a punt, twisting kick. Deshaun Jackson is hit before he makes the catch. So that's going to be 15 against ASU. You know, they may recover the ball, but it's not going to matter. Try it. Just ran right over Jackson. And Jackson is hurt. And of course, it occurs the wrath of this crowd here at Strawberry Canyon. And that was pretty cheap. Well, for good reason, because the guy just took one back on you, and then he caught a 52 yard pass. Punts in the air, and Tryon, very simply, is just very early getting there and doesn't stop himself from throwing a forearm at the head of Deshaun Jackson. And right now, Deshaun Jackson is hurt. They hung it off. Jeff Tedford's looking on, and here's the play. Helmet to helmet. Not only helmet to helmet, but Tryon was very much aware and had a very clear sight line that Deshaun Jackson did not have the football. You know, something to consider. They, they could toss Tryon from this game for that. Yeah, they could. The ball hit him in the back. Jackson will sit up. And uh, I, I think he just got his bell rung, but it's just a question of how serious he got his bell rung. Well, you get hit like that in a football game, and you have a tendency, like when you're a little kid, and you turn around and around in a circle, and you end up holding on to the ground. I mean, that's how you feel. You feel like you have to hold on to the ground. And definitely, you see Tryon maliciously dropping his helmet yeah. onto Deshaun Jackson's head. Very cheap shot. Jackson's fine. He bounces up, runs off the field. Well, the old Rod Kidwell from Jerry Maguire. Yeah. To bounce up and run off the field, get the crowd going. So they will move the ball up to the 36-yard line. There will be no ejection, so they're going to deem this was not intentional. And the crowd continues to boo, and you know they've got they've got pretty good cause here. Well, you have to say a turnover and a few punts, and what their defense has given up, and in special teams what they've given up, Arizona State. So far in this second quarter has lost their composure. Longshore gonna go up, throws a swing out of the backfield, caught by the fullback store at that time. And it's not gonna gain much. In fact, it's gonna gain maybe a yard. Barry, how good is Cal today? Zero penalties. Zero timeouts called, and they've only faced one third down, and that was on the first series of the football game for them. And the efficiency of Nate Longshore right now, looking like an old veterano in the Pac-10 at quarterback. They've not yet turned the ball over. I mean, offensively, they are just absolutely clicking. Gain of a yard on that play. It'll be second down to nine. There's a pitch to Lynch, Lynch short side, trying to get around and can't. 
Arizona pursues pretty well sideline to sideline. Let's send you to our college football Saturday studio and another Kyocera game break with Mike Goldberg. Goldie? Barry, what a finish between Navy and Tulsa. This game would go into overtime. Tulsa leading 24-23. Navy scored in the overtime session, but the extra point was blocked. And Tulsa holds on in the overtime session to defeat Navy on a failed PAT. Guys. Tough way to lose. <laughs> failed PAT. Yeah, overtime. no one wants to sit with the kicker on the bus after that. <laughs> this is only California's second, third down. It's a third and ten. Go out of the gun. And the pass thrown right into the hands of Sam Desai. And I'm not quite sure what happened there. I mean, he hit him directly in the hands. He just didn't get his head around. And that's what the coaches always tell you. When you come out of your break, before you throw your hands out there, you need to have your head. You know, they, there's a reason they call it hand-eye. I mean, you have to look. You have to see the ball going into your hands. And he didn't get his head around in time. Ball bounced right off his hands, right off his knuckles. So the Bears will have to punt. It'll be Andrew Larson once again. That broke a string of nine straight completions for Nate Longshore. Larson hits this one really well. Turns it over, drives Richardson all the way back to the nine yard line. And Richardson could go. He does get a little room and gets it out to the 25, a return of 16. And a 55 yard punt, we're gonna get a penalty. see what this is all about. It was thrown right about where the tackle was made. And now they're going to say no flag. They'll wave the flag off. So the Sun Devils will start right at about the 25-yard line. When we come back, we'll send you to our college football Saturday studio. We'll get another update with Mike Goldberg, 28-7 to Cal. Weeknights on the best damn sports. We welcome you back. 28 to 7 ball game. 8:38 remaining to be played here in the first half. ASU trying to get a little something, something back. Start at the 26 yard line. Carpenter straight back with time. Throws this time. He's got a man and unable to hang on to it. And a very rare drop by Brent Miller. Zach Miller's. Brother, but neither one of them drops the ball very much. That was, again, we talked about hitting the side of the hands. That hit Miller in the hands. Brent Miller, the older brother of Zach Miller, 20 pounds lighter than his younger brother. Carpenter, Steady blocker, very capable receiver. Carpenter, though, struggling now. He's 0 for 6 ever since that fumble. Second down and 10. Brent Miller in motion, play fake again. Carpenter goes out, throws. It is intercepted by Hughes. Hughes saw that one coming a mile away at the 35, looking for some help. Gets it down to the 25-yard line, first down Bears. I don't know why people do it. I don't know why quarterbacks do it. I don't know why they test Damian Hughes. You should consider that side of the field locked down when he's one-on-one -on, -one on one of your receivers, even if it is Terry Richardson, who's a big explosive playmaker in his own right. Hughes may have even baited Rudy Carpenter into making this throw. Richardson's coming out of his break, but Hughes is right there and saw it. Great play by him, great anticipation. What an unbelievable cornerback he is. He really is, yeah. I mean, he is a preseason All-American selection, and I mean, the way he's playing, you can't deny him that at the end of the season. And that's his fourth interception of the year. Last year he had five, so he's doing pretty good this year, but people continue to throw at him, and I just don't know why, because he keeps picking them off. First down Bears, and again, Marshawn Lynch. Lynch cuts it back inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. That'll be a pickup of about eight, maybe seven. Carpenter looking for answers on the phone, talking to her. Maybe it's a higher power. I don't know. Well, right now, Cal is just running on all cylinders. Not to use a cliche, but all three phases of the game are working for them. They look strong on special teams. The only thing is Richardson's got a few yards on him on punt kick returns. But other than that, Cal has played a perfect game. Other than the first series for their offense and the first series of their defense, 
Cal looks like a great Pac-10 team right now. Sean Jackson back in the ballgame, incidentally, split to the far side. They give this to Lynch again. Lynch will not get much this time. He might have picked up a couple. It's going to be third down and one, and we go to the sideline of Jim Watson. Waddy? Yeah, the good news is out on the field. Number one, Deshaun Jackson is back in the game. You know, he took that head-to-head -head helmet hit, and for a minute they thought it was a jawbreaker. They brought him over to the sideline, and the medical staff right away was working on his jaw. And if you look, Barry, over at, at the Cro-Magnon head at the top of Petro's shoulders, <laughs> you see what I'm talking about. You know, that jawbone goes all the way up. So they had him grinding his teeth back and forth. They got to keep him on the field. Besides, Longshore, he's probably the most important guy. A touchdown in six straight games, and he scores a touchdown every fifth time he touches it. He comes in motion this time. They play fake this time, and Longshore will throw the other way. Bonus count this time by his tight end, Stevens, and he will get it down about the eight yard line. Oh, I gotta get the trouble and I get call from Wadi down on the side. That's not fair. My head's not that big. It's not suitcase size. I'll tell you who is big and tough is Craig Stevens. This is a guy who was knocked out on the first play of the game at Tennessee, and he's finally back for the Cal Bears. Coach Jeff Tedford describes his tight end as the toughest guy and the strongest guy on the team, 6'5", 254, just coming around on a little drag route, making the catch, takes two Sun Devils to bring him down. Jackson comes in motion again on first down, straight back long short, throws it for Jackson, he's open, he's got it, touchdown Bears! Keno Walter White again getting used up in one on one coverage by Deshaun Jackson. A couple words of advice for Arizona State. Number one, do not throw it to a guy who is being covered by Damian Hughes. Number two, no more one on one coverage with Deshaun Jackson involved because this guy is going to do it to you. Longshore right now, 11 for 14, 189 yards, four touchdowns. Not bad. That's, no, a, that's a, okay. That's a good half. Right, the point is up and good, and the Bears lead ASU 35-7. Well, the quarterback situation for Arizona State, I say situation, it's because all through training camp, it was just that. Big national story. Was, and, and Dirk Cutter actually said, okay, my starter is Sam Keller. Next day, it changed, it was Rudy Carpenter. There's more to the story. It's a dream to be a senior and be able to play the last year and have, play for all the marbles, you know what I mean? So I'm very humbled by it because shit, that other guy deserved it just as much as I did. I'm not going to wish bad upon Sam or injury upon Sam. Um, I'm going to continue to, to fight through this and be ready to play. And if it, it comes up, you know, I'm going to do what I did last year. I made a mistake on the quarterback situation and I'm changing my mind. And we're going to start Rudy Carpenter. Uh, I've excused Sam Keller uh, from practice tonight to consider his options. And whatever, whatever Sam decides to do, including return to the team or to uh, go play elsewhere, whatever Sam decides, we wish him the best. And thus, Rudy Carpenter is the quarterback. He's struggling mightily right now. But uh, And incidentally, one thing we should clear up, too, there were some reports in the press. There's a little pooch kick this time. I'll pick this up in just a minute. Fair catch is called and made by Miller at about the 27-yard line. There were some reports that uh, that the team, that is, there is a committee of leadership committee on the team, that they went to Dirk Cutter and said, no, 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 you can't do that. That's not the way it was. Dirk Cutter actually went to them. So that is a part of the story that might not be known yet, but that's the way all of that went down. It's a confusing story and interesting because Dirk Cutter's a coach who's been around a long time. He's a good coach and he knows what he's doing. So when you flip quarterbacks in 24 hours, there's a lot of questions out there. In my opinion, Rudy Carpenter was always the better quarterback, and what he did last year was phenomenal. But right now, he's really struggling here at Cal. There's a give this time to Terrain, and Terrain will get a little yardage. So, plus yardage on first down for the first time in a long time, as you look at Dirk Cutter. And uh, he has uh, coached some pretty darn good quarterbacks, as you see. I mean, Ryan Dinwiddie at Boise State, Matt Hasselback, Andrew Walter, who's going to be the starter now in uh, Oakland. Joey Harrington, Akili Smith up at Oregon, A.J. Feely at Oregon, all guys in the NFL. He's a guy that understands and knows offense. He knows how to mix it up, and he knows how to teach these guys to play football. Here's a give this time to Terrain again, and Terrain will have the first down, I believe. Pretty close. Kind of going back to what brung them, and it was Terrain that brung them on that first drive. 
Desmond Bishop on the stop, but the chains will move. And it's important right now that Rudy Carpenter settle down. You ask the question, what happens? He did come looking off the field earlier in this game. What happens if Rudy Carpenter is hurt or even pulled from this football game? I don't think that's going to happen, but there is a freshman. Danny Sullivan, he wears number 15 out of Los Gatos, California. 6'4", 200 pounds. And if he plays, A-State's probably in trouble, even though they like this kid. He's not experienced. Bears coming with a blitz off the edge, and it's almost picked up. Bishop almost had that one, or beg your pardon, Sid Quan Thompson almost had that one. Good pressure as they threw right into where the blitz was coming from. And you can tell Rudy Carpenter's frustrated. After every play, he comes walking over, looking in the eyes of his coach, Dirk Cutter, and together they're trying to find an answer right now to a Cal defense that has really had their number ever since the very first series of the game. Ofer is last, last eight with a fumble and interception is Rudy Carpenter. Second out and 10. Ball at the 36 yard line. Slot right this time. Now Lewis goes in motion to the long side of the field. Carpenter giving it to Rain. Terrain gets by that first tackler again. Picks up about six. He's really hit by Zach Fullen. Zach Follett is very involved in this football game. Only six tackles coming into the game, but one near sack and a sack and a forced fumble, and he's been all over the field. That time delivering a big blow on Ryan Terrain, who is a guy that can handle it. Right now, A-State getting the ball going a little bit in the run game, but they still are going to have to get down the field with their vertical passing game, because last time I checked, they were down 28 points here in Pac-10 shootout game. Now looking at a third down and five. This is a huge play for ASU. Carpenter straight back. Now he has to step up. He'll run. He'll get the first down short of midfield. Notice that California, when they're rushing off the edge, they're kind of stopping and trying to keep Carpenter in the pocket. Not just kind of, not just putting their ears back and, and going for it. That's because if Rudy gets outside that pocket, they know he has great ability to create. Now, not great ability to create in the run game, even though he just got a first down there, but great ability to get the ball vertically downfield to some of his wide receivers. Remember, Arizona State is replacing their four starting wide receivers right now. They do not have a big play guy on the wideouts, it seems. There's that nine-man front again. The Bears coming off the edge. Carpenter has to unload it. And once again, of course, Damien Hughes absolutely was painted on Chris Brigade. The guy that was coming that time was Mickey Pimentel, forced a bad throw. And when you're looking at a nine-man front and they start bringing people, and there's Follett off the edge, getting to Rudy Carpenter at the same time as Pimentel. There's a nine-man front and they're bringing the pressure. You gotta get rid of the ball a little quicker than that if you wanna complete it. Rudy Carpenter did a good job of just getting rid of it in that situation. Oh, for his last nine. Second down and 10. Motion. Carpenter straight back to pass again. He's in trouble again. He steps up and dropped the football, but it's picked up by one of the Sun Devils who will turn it into a first down. It was Ryan Terrain who said, look what I got. <laughs> Even if they don't give the ball to Terrain, he ends up with it and ends up getting positive yardage. I'm impressed with Terrain. Keegan Herring we have barely seen in this football game. In fact, I only think we saw him on the first play, and that was a fake in a play-action situation, and Terrain has carried the low. Now, he's out there trying to protect his quarterback, Rudy Carpenter. What a nice play by Newton to Fisi to pop that ball loose, but Terrain is there, picks it up, and tries to get a first down, and he got it. At the 40-yard line. Give once again to Terrain, and Run it hard and get something where there was nothing. About three yards on first down. It'll be second down at seven. Well, the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Whether you order a big screen TV or a comfy leather chair, it all ships for only $2.95. Shop and save at Overstock.com. Team carries 92 yards for Terrain. That's the one bright spot. Play fake. Carpenter going to put it up again. He throws. He's got a man. Kimbrough makes the catch. And a first down at the 24-yard line. 
and that's the first completion in his last 10. And finally, Rudy Carpenter, other than a drop ball, which was also a perfect throw to Brent Miller on the money. Saquon Thompson on the coverage there, Kimbrough, but nice throw by Rudy Carpenter. The arrow route, Cal's in a little bit of zone, and incidentally, they're in that zone to protect Saquon Thompson, but Saquon Thompson, the first guy there. Nice first down play, Arizona State needs a touchdown here. A field goal is not going to be enough. They've got to get some confidence back going into the locker room. No question. First down at the 24-yard line. Carpenter will roll to his right, throws the other way, and the catch is made by Kimbrough, and he's knocked out of bounds immediately at about the 17-yard line. Nicky Pimentel, who's been all over the field, played very well for California, got the start today, as we said ahead of Justin Moy, who had been starting. And when you talk about defense in the Pac-10 and you talk about the innovations offensively that come from the Pac-10, when you look at defense, you need guys that go sideline to sideline. You need linebackers that can really move. Mickey Pimentel, 6'2", 238-pound senior out of San Diego, California, has really shown a lot of mobility in this game, getting sideline to sideline for the Golden Bears defense. So it'll be second down and about three yards. They give it to Terrain, and he's got it running hard to Whitty. Running hard down about the 11 yard line, maybe the 12 yard line. It's going to be a first down. DeWitty's still looking for his first touchdown on the year. Sophomore out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. And right now, Arizona State's doing a good job getting this drive going. They understand that they need a touchdown. They're running the ball well. They're getting back to what they did in the very first drive of the game. They're getting it to their backs and finding some easy throws for Rudy to make to get him some confidence. So a first down at the 12 yard line. Carpenter gives the terrain, and they're unable to stop him at all. Inside the five to about the four. Terrain runs hard. He runs hard and he goes straight up field. I mean, there's not a lot of movement in his game. I mean, he's not going to sit there and juke you out of your socks, but he's definitely going to go upfield. And when he sees the ball, he angles that big body. He runs kind of upright, so he is going to take a lot of hits. And finally, Greg Van Hoosen with the play. And that gets Terrain over 100 yards. He's 15 carries for 103 wow. yards in this game. So while his team may not be doing much, he certainly is contributing. And we got a timeout on the field. It's the first timeout called by Arizona State. So they'll still have a couple remaining. Let's take a look at our AFLAC trivia Aflac. question of the day. And it is Marshawn Lynch rushing for 1,246 yards last year, third most in California history. In the top two. Easy if you love Golden Bear football. I do, and it is. So we'll let you think about that. Mull it over. One of those dudes wore glasses. Yes, he did. Is that a tip? Yes, One of those did. dudes wore glasses. Cool, and not just cool, glasses. Cool glasses. Cool glasses, but not just glasses like, you know, I'm on the football field and I'm, you know, I'm just looking through the face mask. And then, you know, when I'm in class, I'm, I'm rocking the glasses. But glasses under the helmet, which is an unbelievable look. He didn't rock anything in class. I got to tell you. <laughs> what a beautiful day. He didn't rock a book in class. <laughs> it is a great day here and a great facility. We were, we were talking about this before. You know, if you're just a, a football fan, I don't care if you root for either one of these teams, it's just a great place to be. And it's high school band day. Which, which is I know you love special. it. I love high school band. All the outfits, the sequins, the hats, the capes. And this is a beautiful stadium. I know it's old, and maybe there's a couple splinters here and there in the seats, but what's wrong with that? It's a classic and wonderful place to watch a football. Part of the charm. First down, Sun Devils just inside the five-yard line. And he gave us the terrain again, and terrain is in. Touchdown. A gain of four, but it's enough. And the Sun Devils get an all-important touchdown with a minute and a half remaining in the half here. Terrain is a guy that did it all on this drive, not only running the football, but picking up fumbles and bailing out his quarterback. And that's just a physical run. Terrain wanted that end zone. He saw the end zone. He angled his body to the end zone. And he tasted the end zone. A nice play and a good drive to get some confidence back by Arizona State. But they still have to stop Cal. There's a minute 31 left. Yeah, and knowing Jeff Tedford, he's not going to tuck it away here. Ainsworth's drive for point is up and good. It's a 35 to 14. California lead now and uh, injured uh, Arizona State player. It is uh, Andrew Carnahan, I believe, and that could really be a problem if 
he should go down. Let's go back to our trivia question. And here is the answer Affleck. to our Aflac trivia question of the day. Marshawn Lynch last year rushed for 1,246 yards. Third most in Cal history. Who are the top two? Well, the guy that we were talking about is Chuck Muncie. I'm assuming he's one of them. He is, and the other now playing down in Arizona, J.J. Arrington. Chuck Muncie was big time, though, wasn't he? Yeah, he sure was. And again, he could see it all out there. <laughs> but look at Marshawn Lynch. I mean, here's a guy that might outrush both those guys when it's all said and done here at Berkeley. Just a strange running style to me, but a guy who simply gets it done, and he's fun to watch and pretty to watch, and a run is never over when he's running the ball because, like we were talking about, he's like it's like he's laminated almost, and, and water falls off him. The tacklers just fall right off him. He's a very physical runner, but also a finesse-style runner, just a perfect mix of the two. The bad news for Arizona State is Andrew Carnahan is being helped off the field, leg injury of some sort, and... Uh, He's a guy who they really rely on. He's one of the team leaders. He's a senior. He's their best offensive lineman. And should he be gone, uh, they were really missing. Interesting, too, Pete, that 13-play drive now, when you start looking at numbers, we mentioned this before, but it's even more startling now. ASU has run 49 offensive plays to just 22 for California. And, and when you look at the clock, they've had the ball for 20 minutes, while Cal's had it for 8 minutes and 29 seconds. And they've run the ball pretty effectively. Arizona State has at least on their first touchdown drive and that touchdown drive. You always look at the time of possession, and sometimes it reminds me of those old Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, Daryl Talley, Buffalo Bills teams. And they'd always be down as far as time of possession goes, but they'd usually, four straight Super Bowls, be on top with the score going. Now, I'm not saying cows like the Buffalo Bills back in the day, but certainly getting it done very quickly on offense, and there's no question that a special teams touchdown helps you out with those stats as well. Here's Ainsworth's kick. Marcus O'Keefe will be the deep man for California. He'll take it at the three. Actually, he won't take it. Now he bends over, picks it up. Now he's got room. He's the 20. He's the 25-yard line, and ASU closes it down pretty quickly. For a moment, he saw a whole lot of green in front of him. Well, Sports Ultimate Nightly Highlight Show is here. The FSN final score. Every great highlight, every unforgettable moment, every night on FSN. It's the only national show that gives you nothing but wall-to-wall -wall highlights. The FSN final score every night only on FSN. Check your local listings for the start time. Your area. Hey, where the band stops playing. <laughs> Is that a band? I think so. Or is it just a guy in a tank top? It's the FSN band. It's a guy in a tank top with an electric guitar. <laughs> Things on his feet. Yeah. His mouth, <laughs> his top of his head. It's a pink tank top. <laughs> Here's a give this time to Lynch. Lynch bounces it outside. It's a foot race. He's in midfield. He's the 40 and knocked out of bounds the 34 yard line. Well, Marshawn Lynch went 72 yards with one yes last week. Picks up 40 on this one. And like we were talking about, Arizona State has got to be very careful to try and stop Cal. And that's not what they did on this play. A beautiful play. Jordan Hill with his hands on Lynch, but Lynch can run right through any kind of arm tackle. Finds a hole, nice hole too, and gets it down the sideline and uses his speed. Josh Barrett eventually able to run him out of bounds, but not before Marshawn Lynch with a huge gain for his offense. And now Berkeley's got a chance to put up another touchdown here in the first half. Incidentally, should correct something. I mentioned that the ASU would call that timeout a moment ago. It was Cal that called it. So Cal has two timeouts. ASU with all three. Long short throws. There's the tight end Stevens. Stevens trying to get a little bit more. And I don't think that's going to be a fumble. They may call it a fumble, but I, they are calling it a recovery by ASU, but I, I would be almost certain that he was down. Caldwell makes the recovery. I'm sure they will review this. Je Jeff Tedford not happy about it. That's always a dangerous situation when you have a guy, even though Craig Stevens is a starting tight end here, you have a guy fighting for the football. Should have probably just gone out of bounds, fighting for extra yardage, and knee down. Very close in the shadows, but it did look like, Barry, you're right, his knee was down. Well, they have not stopped the play yet here. Now they will. They're going to take a look at this, and, and I'll tell you the truth, I, I believe this will be reversed. Well, his knee was definitely flexed on the play, but I'm not sure if it was all the way down. It's kind of hard to tell in those shadows. Let's look at it as slowly as possible. And there's the leg and the knee in question. 
No. It's close, isn't it? It's in a shadow. It's a little hard to tell. And I'm not sure if there's going to be conclusive enough evidence You're right. to overturn this play. I'll take a close look at this. And of course, they want to be sure and be right. It has not been an easy week uh, for the uh, officiating crews here in the Pac-10. Let's take a look at it one last time as they're checking it in the replay booth. It's real close. Very close. But if I had to say, I think After the knee was up the ruling was the on the right field play. is confirmed. Arizona State ball. Well, right now call it on is the field. Confirmed. Yep. It was, it was close enough that you can't, you cannot say this was inconclusive. And no, not a great or week. Conclusive. Not a great say. week for the Pac-10 officiating crews. But that being said, they saw what happened. They saw that a mistake was made. They corrected it and took action, and now they're moving forward. Ball at the 26-yard line. 49 ticks remaining. ASU has all three timeouts. They give on a draw play to Terrain. Terrain pops this one. Then gets it all the way to the 45-yard line. It's getting fun to watch today. 23 yards on that one. And he's starting to really feel it. Obviously having a day for his career, a day he's going to tell his kids about. I mean, this is a guy really moving the ball down the field with a sense of urgency now. And let's see if Rudy Carpenter can get something going. He's got 37 seconds. Yeah, which could be enough time. This time he throws, it's intercepted again by Hughes. Hughes tries to hurdle a man, he's gone. He just hurled right over Carpenter. He's going to take it to the house. How good is this guy? continuing to throw in his direction doesn't make a lot of sense to me, especially on a very simple slant route. Rudy Carpenter doesn't look off his wide receiver. Mike Jones was the man who the ball was intended for, but Damian Hughes stepped right in front. And then what a beautiful run to get it into the end zone. Early people, so athletic. That's a huge play and a back-breaking play. Well, he's an NFL player. I mean, this is an NFL corner, and this is an NFL-style play. Look at him. He's hungry for the end zone, makes a cut, and then cuts back and hurdles Rudy Carpenter. Great play with the ball. And Rudy Carpenter just having a nightmare. First half, along with the Arizona State Sun Devils, Andrew Carnahan, their All-American prospect right tackle, carried off the field. Rudy's thrown a couple interceptions to the best corner around. And Arizona State begging to get into that locker room and talk it over. No question. And there may not be enough words. 42 yards on that return. Fifth interception in the last three games, and two of them have gone for scores. People got to stop throwing at him. Yeah, I think so, huh? Well, last week against Portland State, Cal led 42 to 16 at the half. And Jeff Tetford called off the dogs. He sat all his regulars the entire second half. Think that's going to happen this time? Nope, nope. Not in the Pac-10. Not with Arizona State on the other side of the field and the explosive offense that they've had over the years. There's a little bloop again. And dropping to a knee this time was Mike Nixon who returned that one. They were not going to put the ball in Richardson's hands and let him beat him. So the Bears might have just driven a nail in a casket here. Momentary delay. Gives us a chance, actually, I want to say hello to a couple of guys who I know are watching this game. I know they are, because I know one of them personally. <laughs> Dave is Ryan Tompkins. He's uh, in a rehab hospital right now, making himself whole all over again. And his roomie, Owen Paris, is sitting there making sure that Ryan watches the game. A couple of true competitors and heroes down there. No God question. bless you both. Cracking, guys. Now this is the most points by a California team in a half in a Pac-10 game. Old record was 41 against ASU also back in 03. 
Well, kick off your football weekend tonight with Pro Football Preview, NFL insider Jay Glazer. Going to be joined by former NFL stars Tim Brown, Eddie George, and Jason Seahorn. They'll break down the biggest stories from across the league. Pro Football Preview tonight at 11, only on FSN. I waited for that cannon shot at the end. <laughs> <laughs> So they got 15 seconds. I can't imagine they're going to do anything risky here. Of course, I'd be wrong. Carpenter throws a clear out this time, and the catch is made underneath by Mike Jones, and he steps out of bounds. Well, remember, Longshore missed his first couple of passes. But since then, 12 for 13, 198 yards, four touchdowns, and I'm sure Rudy Carpenter would love to have those stats. It's just not that kind of day for Rudy so far, but as good as he's been in the first half, Nate Longshore, maybe Rudy can turn it around in the second half. This is an explosive Arizona State team, but right now, really searching for answers. Second out and short. Carpenter in trouble. We got a flag. It should be a hold. Uh, that time, the catch is made and really cracked immediately as Richardson. But I think this is going to come back. I think it's going to be on Brandon Rod, and I'll tell you how I know. While the play was still going on, he was staring at the officials, shrugging his shoulders with his hands up. That's usually <laughs> yes. a sign of guilt. Yes. Brandon, another one. Holding on the many offense, offensive line in this league. Ten from yard Hawaii. Penalty. Previous spot, repeat from second. Aia, Hawaii. Four vowels in the name of his hometown. I-E-I. I-E-I, -E -I. yes, very unusual. A-I-E-A. -E That's right. Just four vowels, straight up. Only other word that I can think of that has four vowels is a Q, Q. Or just Q. Q of the a line. Q. Q U E U E. Oh, very good. Thought you were talking about our. I do crossword puzzles. Thought you were talking about our spotter, Dick Quinlan. Yeah, like that, that too. Well, that's going to do it for the end of the first half. And Arizona State looked great, boy. On that first drive, they led seven to nothing. And after that, it was all downhill for the Sun Devils and. On the gas for the California Golden Bears. They played about as perfect a half, taking away that first drive. Let's go to the field right now. Jim Watson with Jeff Tedford. Jim. Jeff, after that opening touchdown by Arizona State, you got to be so proud of your guys, the way they responded. Yeah, uh, defense stiffened up a little bit. They had a great drive to open up the game. They executed very well. Our defense responded well, and then the offense got going a little bit. We made some big plays. We always talk about Jackson. We always talk about Longshore. Talk about Damian Hughes. Petros thinks he's the best quarterback in the country. Well, he's, he's shown that he's pretty good today. I mean, he's had quite a few interceptions this year. We've got to play a four-quarter game, though. He's got to come back. They're going to throw a lot in the second half, so he's going to get tested. Appreciate the time. I'll let you get in with the kids. Well, we heard all year long about how good California was going to be offensively and defensively. Barry, I think they finally showed up. I don't think there's any question about it. They have answered a whole lot of questions, at least in the first 30 minutes. Right now, let's take you to our College Football Saturday studio and Mike Goldberg. Goldie. Barry, thank you very much. Wow. right there is Petros. Waddy's down there. Petros, I really didn't think I would be saying this after the first five minutes, but this is a whooping. It really is, and Cal has come out here and almost played a perfect football game, save a couple drives by Arizona State, especially the first one. Nate Longshore has come out and been great. Marshawn Lynch has done his job. Superstars all over the field for Cal have truly emerged, and really, guys have done what you thought they were going to do. Deshaun Jackson's been awesome. What I have been shocked with is Rudy Carpenter has just not looked good and a little bit rattled. Maybe he hurt his ankle in this game when he was sacked and fumbled in the first quarter. But the one stat that is not up there, zero penalties for Cal. Zero penalties for zero yards. Right now, Cal is playing an almost perfect Pac-10 football game against a very good Pac-10 opponent. And making them not look very good. And to make matters worse for ASU, Cal will get the ball to start the second half. And uh, right now, we're going to take you down to the field amongst the high school bands. This is Jim Watson. Waddy? One time at band camp, 
Yeah, they were everywhere down here. I talked to Dirk Cutter coming out of the ASU locker room a couple of minutes ago. I asked him, hey, you look so good on that opening drive. What changed after that? He said California started to blitz on first down, and they just weren't picking it up. Penalties, turnovers, then the crowd got into it. Rudy got a little bit rattled. I said, why do you keep throwing to Damian Hughes' side? He said, we can't play on half of the field, and Rudy has to throw it on time. You know, it's never fun talking to a coach when he's down 28 at halftime. Me and the field judge went up that dark tunnel. And we felt like those grave diggers outside the haunted mansion, just shivering with our lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> and you were being kind. Give us the Marshawn Lynch on first down. He had 68 yards in the first half. 40 of them on one play near the end of the first half. Here are the possessions for Cal. They were three and out after the Arizona State touchdown. And look at this. Touch, 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 punt, touch. And then they fumbled. And they had a couple of defensive, a defensive touchdown. And they had a special teams touchdown. And they did pretty well. They look perfect. It's hard to say that in a football game because there's like 100 guys out there, but they really look perfect. They're playing as a team, and they're doing all things well in all phases of the game. Second out of seven now, long short, short drop. He's going to float it out here for Jordan. Jordan makes the grab at the 40-yard line. You know what Jordan did? He never made a motion toward the ball until it was right on. And Robert Jordan, only 165 pounds on Justin Tryon there, and doing a great job. Jordan's a veteran player. And he's averaging about 13 yards of cash. Great compliment on the other side to Deshaun Jackson. And he's very fast in his own right, 4-3. But only 165 pounds. Look how skinny he is. I mean, I thought his arms would have gotten bigger ever since he was a freshman when he was kind of forced into play a couple years ago. And they're trying to feed him. He's a tough guy, but still very skinny. He's also Marshawn Lynch's cousin. It's that Hawkins comes in motion. They go out of the gun. Blitz comes. It's picked up. Quick out to, look to Jordan again. Jordan in midfield. Gets across midfield. He's going to have another California first down, I believe. Justin Tryon took a stiff arm from Jordan. 165 pounds, but he brings it. He does it. He was tough as a young freshman. He's out of Hayward, California, which is not far from here. They're going to say it is short of the first down, so second down and one. Lynch has gone all the way except for one play at running back, and that one play turned into a California touchdown on the throw to uh, Justin Forsett. Here's Lynch again. Flag is down. Lynch will take it down to the 40-yard line, but we'll see about the penalty. And will this be the first penalty against the Bears? I think it's going to be a holding penalty on number 51, Alex Mack, the center. Sun Devil shot that gap, the A gap, right at the snap. I think he had a little takedown action. Illegal chop block, number 75 in the offense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Close. Second down. I should Got have, right next to him. I should have talked over him. <laughs> Todd so, Eric Robertson. So that'll back the Bears up with their first penalty of the game. And now Justin Forsett comes into the game. But Eric Robertson sometimes plays center. I want you to know that. That's true. He does. <laughs> also a bass guitar enthusiast. Not a lot of those. And majoring in Scandinavian studies. You don't find that very much. And what do you do with it once you graduate? Talk about Thor. <laughs> He's a Leif Erikson expert. Second half, 15 now for the Bears. Quick screen this time to Jordan. Jordan gets it all the way to midfield. So a pickup of 14. Bo Manatai makes the stop, and again, the Bears giving you yet another look. Jordan's fourth catch, 59 yards. Here's the problem for Arizona State right now. Cal has an offense that's shown you a whole lot of different things in the first half. They've shown you the spread, but they can also run the ball with two good backs. As you see, Forsett is back in the game now, tailback. What are they going to do? Arizona State doesn't know what's a defense, and Cal can just take the air out of them. They cover the blitz right up the middle. Forsett gets the call, and he's going to be close, but I don't know. And it doesn't look like he's going to get a very generous spot, so he may be about a half yard short. Chris Ballonet makes the stop. And the Bears, I'm sure, will go here. And it's knowing Jeff Tedford, this is a situation where he goes. And it shows you what I know. Huh? <laughs> so we're both 0 for 1 here in the second half. Starting strong. <laughs> I said it with conviction, too, didn't I? <laughs> so 
on fourth and one, the Bears will punt just as I thought. And that's exactly what Arizona State needed to happen. Now, they need to get the ball, and they need to score touchdowns. Field goals are not going to be enough in this second half. Arizona State has got to move the ball down the field with a sense of purpose. Rudy's got to be, be on point and stop throwing it to Damian Hughes, and they got to score touchdowns. Well, Larson hit, got it to hit at the one-yard line, but it skipped into the end zone. ASU will begin at the 20-yard line with their first possession of the second half when we come back. What do you value? The New Value Frontier. And brought to you in part by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. By Super 8. See you along the way. And today's first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com, where you'll find thousands of brand name products at savings up to 70% every day of the week. Overstock.com. We welcome you back, ASU, with its first possession of the second half. In motion goes Mike Jones. Carpenter straight back. In trouble, throws under duress and makes a nice throw to Jones for a first down. At the 35-yard line, David Hughes makes a stop, but a flag is down, and I think it's going to come back. Incidentally, Andrew Carnahan did not return at the tackle spot for ASU to start the second half here. I think this is going to go against Cal. Roughing the passer. Roughing the passer. Contact with the face. 15-yard penalty is tacked on to the end of the play. First down. Incidentally, a couple of defensive uh, Substitutions for the Bears. Thomas DeCoot hurt a knee in the first half. He will not return. The extent of his injury is not yet known. He's been replaced by Bernard Hicks. And Robert Peel is now starting at the corner, replacing the Sid Con Thompson to start the second half. And that was a very justified penalty. New Utafisi came off the end and just basically slapped Rudy in the head. I don't know, almost like he was congratulating him. It was pretty hard, and Rudy Carpenter shaking his head around, getting together, and now Arizona State's got a little something going offensively. Just across midfield at the 49-yard line with the first down. Carpenter going to go up again, and he's hit as he throws, but he's got Richardson, and he's got it for a score. Peel went for the ball, came up short. Richardson dances in with a 49-yard touchdown catch. I'm not quite sure what, what Peel was doing. Well, Wara Williams, first of all, started it out coming on a blitz and pressuring Rudy Carpenter. Like you said, Carnahan's out. Steven Berg is out. The whole right side of the Arizona State line is working with second stringers, but Rudy stands in there strong. Wara Williams gets a hand on him, and he just makes a bad decision going after that ball. And Richardson, he's experienced. He knows what to do. Makes the catch, 49-yard score. Don't go anywhere yet. It's a 42 to 21 ball game. That's exactly what Arizona State needed to happen. They needed to get a stop, and they needed to get a touchdown. And now they got it. And now Cal can't afford to get off the gas. They lead by 21. They'll have it when we come back. I'd like a person. Bears lead it 49 yard touchdown pass from Carpenter to Richardson. Two plays. Covering 80 yards. Didn't take very much time. Marcus O'Keefe going to be the deep man to receive the kick of Ainsworth. Kick returns have been dramatic on both sides today. Ainsworth drives this one pretty well. And O'Keefe will not bring it out. And we'll take a Kiyosera game break right now. We go to our Saturday game day studios with Mike Goldberg. Mike. Well, Barry, Penn State led number one Ohio State at the horseshoe, 3-0 at the Three break. Ohio Buckeyes State. scored to make it 7-3. And you know, Billy Ray Smith said on the halftime report, let's find out what Troy Smith is all about. Well, B.R., this is what Troy Smith's all about. He's about the Heisman Trophy. He's about a national championship. He's about a 14-3 Buckeye lead. All right, thanks, Mike. Buckeyes back in front of Penn State now. And flags falling all over the place here. And I think this is going to probably be an illegal substitution. Twelve dudes out there. Can't play with that many. That's can too you? many. Well, you can. <laughs> <laughs> illegal substitution on the defense. Twelve men on the field prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. First down. So a little bit of a freebie for the Bears here. 
Dirk Cutter really has done an outstanding job here at ASU. And this is actually both these teams are, are pretty young teams. And you really start looking up and down their roster. Young teams that share the top of the Pac-10 with USC right now, Oregon, and the two teams on the field right now. That is the top of our conference. Inside handoff to Lynch, and Lynch was about a step away from breaking that. Stop by McFoy and Catanese. Ryan McFoy, just a freshman here at Arizona State. He's got a brother who is a senior at USC. Chris McFoy. Great player at USC, Ryan McFoy's older brother, but a blocking type of wide receiver, a guy that makes a lot of plays, three or four catches a game. But Chris McFoy is a senior at USC and doesn't have his touchdown yet, not one. Ryan McFoy, only a true freshman out of Chino, already has a touchdown inter interception return versus Nevada. Wow. Jealousy there, I guarantee you. It is to Lynch again, great straight on. Lynch gets the first down across the 35, almost to the 40 yard line. Catmulls just took one right in the mush. And here's what's going to be the problem for Arizona State trying to come back in this football game. What they need is stops and quick scores. And they just were able to turn one around to begin the second half. But the problem is Marshawn Lynch is on the football field, and he's not going to let you do that. He's going to be able to get seven, six, five yards of pop and really grind that clock out if Cal needs that to happen. Now, of course, they still have big playmakers on the field they can get the ball to. But if Tedford wants to, he can just run the ball and take the air out. This time a quick toss and well covered that time. Good job by Josh Barrett coming over from the safety spot. Let's go down to the sideline once more. Jim Watson, Waddy, what do you got? Barry, I know you live in these parts, so you're real familiar with Tightwad Hill, but there's, there's something else up on Tightwad Hill. That is the California Victory Cannon. It used to be kept on the sidelines since uh, 1971. It's been up on the hill. And, you know, they shoot it off before each game, after each score, and after each Cal victory. And in 1991 against Pacific, the Bears scored 12 touchdowns, and the Cannon actually ran out of ammunition. Now, Petros went to school here for what, three weeks? I believe so. Petros, where can you buy ammo in Berkeley? <laughs> <laughs> Telegraph, I guess. Didn't get anything else there. That cannon does manage to control riots, however. I will say that. It frightens me every time. Alex Mack comes out of the game here as an equipment problem. Might have blown a shoe. And Mark Gray is coming in for him. Alex Mack is the center. Now, you always have to be cognizant when they bring a center out of the game. That's a new snap. And Nate Longshore, hopefully, is going to be comfortable for Cal's sake with Mark Gray taking the snap from him instead of Alex Mack. Going out of the gun on third down. comes a blitz, and he unloads it. Clearly a great catch by Deshaun Jackson. Had it in his hands, couldn't quite hang on, and once again, the Bears are gonna have to give it up, so they're gonna have to start looking over their shoulder a little bit here, because we know ASU can move the football. ASU can move the football, and they got exactly what they needed in that situation. Cal threw the ball a couple times, didn't utilize their run game with four set or Lynch. What they did was throw the ball. Incomplete passes are good for Arizona State right now. Stops the clock. A-State's getting the ball back, and I don't know. Rudy looks pretty good on that last throw. So Larson to punt it away again, and he hits this one pretty good, too. It's going to drive Richardson all the way back to the 14-yard line. Recalls a fair catch, so Larson, a 45-yard punt. More importantly, no return. And the Sun Devils will start at the 15 when we come back. And the Bears call the Tribune Line will begin the headliners with the flight ground. The Bears ground will get the Vikings. Plus, we'll catch you up in the White Sox and Cubs. That more stuff Monday at 5 30. Welcome back to our top pitch with the Stop and Evans to the action on the sidelines. ASU, down 21, gets a three and a half attack for the minute. We'll start at the 15 yard line. To Tulane and Tulane pops into the secondary again. And they're taking up the 33, and the Bears have absolutely not had an answer for Ryan Tulane. But not only that, but they've come out of this second half, and Cal has not shown a great deal of tempo or any kind of sense that they want to put this game away. Now you see Ryan Tulane and Sam Mahal running through an off tackle with Desmond Bishop. They're taking it up the field like they have all over the Arizona the State team has been on and off in this football game, especially the first half. The Bears been absolutely nothing wrong with the running of Ryan Tulane and the last 42 yards. 
Nixon right on his legs right after he gets the handoff and as a running back that kind of stuff makes you very very angry Mike Nixon 22 years old must be a radio guy when he grows up you gotta talk to him after the game played baseball actually in the Dodgers organization for a couple of years he was a top of three coming out of high school here's Lynch again he cuts it back this time runs right into the pursuit at the 15 yard line right now let's go back to our college football Saturday studio get a Kiyosera game break with Mike over Mike Hey, Barry, number four, West Virginia, is on the road at East Carolina taking on the Pirates, and they are not quite dominating this game in the fashion you might think they would. Pat White to Owen Schmidt breaks the 7-7 tie, but West Virginia leads only 14-7 at the half in East Carolina. Barry. All right, thanks very much, Mike. West Virginia, very good team. They run that spread offense, and as a matter of fact, it was uh, the California coaches went back in the spring to West Virginia's practice, and... Uh, took a few notes because they don't play each other so they cooperate with one another help the Bears offense Longshore gets stepped on coming out from under center then throws caught by Jordan and Jordan may be gone it's going to say he stepped out of bounds stepped out of bounds at the 36 yard line but a first down and only the second third down conversion of the ball game for the Bears Robert Jordan with the true freshman Ryan McFoy guarding him at safety kind of a stack formation with Jackson coming low and then Jordan running the outside out and just gets that toe out of bounds. Otherwise, I think he would have gone to the house on that one. And right now the Bears are not showing any of that spread offense, especially in this series. They're running their normal two-back offense for sets in the game right now. And this is what Tedford's offense looked like before Coach Dunbar showed it. And now they bring Forsett to the near side out of the backfield. Longshore straight back. The blitz is picked up this time, and the ball is thrown behind for set. Little mix up there. Well, for set thought that he was in some kind of man coverage, so he was going to run a streak route. Nate thought that for set was in some kind of zone coverage, and he expected him to sit down and run some kind of hitch route. And that's when you have a miscommunication. Down lucky in that situation. They don't get the ball intercepted. Nobody was underneath to cover the flat. Second down and 10 now. Forsett remains the running back. Jordan comes to the near side. Three wide outs. Hawkins in the slot to the long side of the field. And they give it to Forsett. Forsett's wrapped up in the backfield. Nothing doing there. Mike Marquardt, who's having a big game, especially in the second half here, comes up with the tackle. Marquardt coming right across the guard and getting back into the backfield. And now Forsett and his running mate, Marshawn Lynch, in this series have had to deal with Sun Devils getting tackles for losses. And these are guys that are not used to that kind of thing. They're used to having a very good Cal offensive line, pushing people in front of them. They're used to having holes to run through. Right now, the Sun Devils defensively tightening up. And again, a third down and long here for the Bears. Third and 13. Out of the gun once more. And a quick screen this time to Jackson. Nothing to do it. Jackson is just destroyed as he gets started by Ryan McFoy. And so once more, the Bears are going to have to give it back to the Sun Devils. And that will bring Larson on. Andrew Larson, who uh, is a first-year punter, and the Bears did not punt the ball well last year at all. So Jeff Tedford feels this is one of the improving parts of his team. Larson averaging 48 yards per punt so far today. But he's been an effective punter beyond that. And he 
hits this one pretty good too. A twisted kick. It's going to drive Richardson all the way back to the 10-yard line. He goes back to the 8-yard line. Is wrapped up and dropped. That's effective punting. 49-yard punt and a two-yard loss on the return. And we go to the sideline. Jim Watson, buddy. Yeah, we're only four games into the season, but offensive lineman Mike Tepper is already Cal's Comeback Player of the Year. Check out the story. Last June, Tepper and some friends were walking along Berkeley's famous Telegraph Avenue when a car full of men pulled alongside and began taunting one of Tepper's female friends. Tepper got involved. He stepped between his friend and the car, and after tossing his friend out of the way, he was struck by the car twice. The impact broke his leg so badly, they almost had to amputate it, but they used a plate and nine screws to get through it. Tepper's rehab has so inspired all of the Cal fans that they actually put together T-shirts, but I'll show them to you after this play. All right, we'll get right back to you. The give this time is the Torani goes again. Gets it up across the 20-yard line, and uh, this is going to be redundant. We go back to Jim Watson. Yeah, and Mike Tepper's girlfriend is in a sorority here at California, and she started this drive. She's the one wearing the jersey, but these are all the other sorority girls, and they wear these shirts that say Tepper time, and you just go up to any Cal girl and say, hey, girls, what time is it? Petros, I gotta get me one of these cheering stands, don't I? Isn't this me? They love him, what can I tell you? Very popular man, he can walk the Pac-10 trail backwards. Absolutely. Without stubbing a toe. Absolutely, he's got shirts saying Wadi time. <laughs> 42 to 21 at the end of the third period. Sluggish third quarter for California. Still there and available for Arizona State. Don't go what do you value? Do you value They had 42 points at the half, four touchdowns in six minutes and change after trailing seven and nothing on that first drive. Longshore, four touchdown passes. They are unable to do anything with Ryan Terrain. He's got 176 yards. And he's out there again. Play fake to him this time. Carpenter will throw underneath. Here's Terrain. Terrain slips the first man. He stopped at the 30-yard line. A gain of eight. We go once more to our college football Saturday studio. Kiyosara game break again. Here's Mike Goldberg. Well, guys, so much for number one Ohio State getting upset at home. Penn State led 3-0 at the half. Anthony Morelli trying to fight his team back into this game in the second half. Uh-huh. Throw it up for grabs. Malcolm Jenkins will bring it in. Joe Paul hasn't won at Columbus since joining the Big Ten. Ain't going to happen today. Ohio State leads 21-6 in the fourth quarter. All right, thanks, Gold. A tough place to play in Ohio State. I wouldn't know, but I can only imagine. Terrain will be close to the first down. He might be a yard short. That angry horseshoe. You know, looking at this Arizona State team, the one thing they are lacking on offense that they were last year is the weapons at wide receiver. Obviously, Dara Hagan was one of the finest players in their history at wide receiver, but they just don't have playmakers at the wide receiver position. Terry Richardson's pretty good, and Rudy Burgess is hurt and not on the trip, but they don't have anybody busting out and making plays to really get that vertical passing game going. Third down and short. Terrain again. He's got it and more. Still on his feet. Bounces outside. He gets the 40-yard line. Steps out of a tackle and is finally stopped on a saving tackle at the 45-yard line by Abu Mafala. Now there's two ways to look at this. You can say that Cal is giving terrain yardage because they don't want to be hurt deep in the passing game because they're winning this football game. Or you can say that terrain is running like a man possessed. Right now, this is a guy with a lot of confidence with close to 200 yards in the football game, and he is running like a man possessed. They are not able to bring him down. He is a tough, strong, willful bat. DeWitt is in there right now. Play fake this time. Carpenter in trouble, and he's going to go down at the 40-yard line. Lou Tafizi was the man who tripped him up. Third sack for the Bears. Remember, ASU is playing with uh, kind of a crippled right side. Andrew Carnahan went down near the end of the first half. He has not returned. Stephen Burke, who's normally the starter alongside Carnahan at right guard, has not played the whole game. Paul Fanica has played there instead. And now it's Richard Tuutu, who is playing for Carnahan. Second down, 14, and we're going to get a procedure call, I think. Fanica. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, number 75. 
We haven't talked a lot about Zach Miller in this football game. For being the best tight end around, I mean, he made a couple plays in the first quarter, and we have not seen much of Zach Miller. Just one catch in the football game. And Cal's done a great job of taking all those people away. Terry Richardson again with the touchdown pass without Rudy Burgess. Nobody really to stretch the field for Arizona State. Second out and a bunch. Straight back as Carpenter is in trouble. Being chased, throws underneath this time. That's going nowhere. DeWitty is really cracked by Mika Kane and Rulon Davis. As the Bears going with backup interior linemen right now, defensive linemen. And their guys showing great energy. They've all been in the backfield in this series, running after Rudy Carpenter. And there was a design screen, but the timing was messed up between Rudy and Terrain, and nothing seems to be working right now for the Arizona State offense. And as long as Cal's defense can play well, and their special teams are solid, they'll win this football game without having to score anymore. So third down in a million, third and 24. Straight back he goes again. And he bounces out, which is where he likes to be. Now he's in trouble. And he has wrapped up all the way back at the 20-yard line. Fourth sack, Desmond Bishop, but he had a lot of help. And again, Carpenter is slow to get up. Rudy Carpenter's having a nightmare day here. He really is, and the Bears are really teeing off on him now. Running around in the backfield, trying to elude defensive linemen is one thing, but when you see a man like that closing in on you, Desmond Bishop, the leader of this Cal defense, you know you're going down quick, and once he gets his hands on Rudy, he slings him down. Fair catch being called by Jackson. He fumbles it, and he picks it up, so they'll mark it back at the 36-yard line. 39-yard punt, no return. We'll call a timeout with 10.48 remaining. 42 to 21, Bears. Come on, Nick. Mm. Out of things that are soft when they step on you, and that's a big man. Nicky Connie only weighs 303 pounds, and looks like Rudy Carpenter could be done for the day. Danny Sullivan is working out the young freshman down on the sideline. First down at the 37-yard line for the Bears. They give it a Lynch, Lynch this time, pops into the secondary, across midfield, down to the 43-yard line. A gain of 20, that'll get Lynch over 100 yards. We'll send you once more to our College Football Saturday studio. Here's a Kyocera game break with Mike Goldberg. Mike. Well, guys, this is not a replay. This is dominance in the second half for the Buckeyes defense. It just became a final. Number one, Ohio State defeats Penn State 28 to 6. Antonio Smith with the interception for the touchdown here. It was 3 0 Penn State at the half, all Ohio State from there. All right, thanks very much, Goldie. We have California with the ball here, flags all over the place. They have it at the 43 yard line. And this second half, incidentally, has been a little bit sloppy on both sides of the field. Well, it has been, and you can never expect the football team to come out and play four perfect quarters because Cal really played two perfect quarters. Right now, an encroachment penalty on the Sun Devils is going to move the Bears up. It's going to be first and five. But when you have such a perfect half and the coach is feeling good, and you saw Tedford coming off the field. I mean, he was trying to hide it, but he was feeling pretty good about his performance. It's hard just to keep that up. I mean. 85 guys on scholarship, 100 and something on the team. To get all those guys moving in the right direction all the time is very difficult. There's a blitz, and Lynch runs right by it. And Lynch gets it down about the 31-yard line. That's going to be another first down. Lynch now 16 carries, 116 yards. Just kind of a routine day for him. Dexter Davis makes the stop. Incidentally, eight penalties now for ASU. They had 11 last week against Colorado, and Dirk Cutter told us yesterday and we visited with him, uh, we just can't have that. No, you can't have that. You can't have that if you want to be a BCS team, and that's what the Sun Devils fancy themselves. They fancy themselves a Rose Bowl, Pac-10 champion, BCS type of team, and you can't go out and have double-digit penalties out there. You can't have turnovers, you can't have interceptions, you can't have blown coverages. You have to limit mistakes if you want to be a championship team, and right now Arizona State looks a little far away from that right now. They load the right side. Lynch is going to throw it. Now he tucks it away and decides to run it. Gets it down to the 30, the 25. And takes a shot as he crosses the 25 from Travis Gaither. Lynch bounces up. Not only says, I'm all right, we're going to get a flag, too, and I think he's going to go against the Sun Devils once more. A little bit too much of a hit. Very physical game 
it may be taunting on Lynch. And you look at Travis Gaithel, only a freshman. Listen to this hit. First of all, Marshawn's going to make that decision to take it up the field. And Travis Gaithel screaming at Lynch. Now you're right, they called it on Lynch. And sometimes those sometimes those officials can hear what you say out there. It's hard to make out with the uh, with the mouthpiece in the mouth. We, we heard him. Yeah, we certainly <laughs> did. I heard Gaithel, and you look at Gaithel, a freshman out of Vista, California, San Diego Defensive Player of the Year last year, and you look at that hair, and you see that he plays linebacker. How can you not compare him to a hero at Arizona State and the most popular player in the history, probably of the state of Arizona, the late Pat Tillman? No question. Boy, from behind, there is a huge yeah. resemblance. Well, I don't think they play the same, even though Gaithel delivered a big hit there. I tried to block Pat Selman once. Tough. And it was one of the worst things that ever happened to me in my life. He was like a rolling ball of butcher knife. <laughs> Longshore going to throw out of the gun. Floats it out here for Jackson. Had to get that one over Peyton and in front of McFoy, or rather in front of Katniss, and couldn't quite do it. So it's not going to be third down on a bunch here for the Bears, third and 17. And even though the Bears' offense has not looked crisp, they have not looked perfect, really they haven't done much of anything here in the second half, even though that's going on, they're still managing the clock well, time is passing, and Arizona State's offense is not out on the field. 381 yards of offense for California. Here's an all-out blitz and a quick screen once again to Jackson. Jackson trying to bounce it outside. Now he's got real boots one block. And he gets it at the 20. Flag down. And so is Jackson. But a flag is going to be down at the 37. I suspect this is going to come back. So a big play for California will be for not. It is a hold against the Bears. Things got a little bunched up there in front of Deshaun Jackson. And a hold did occur. Let's take a look at it. And a hold is going to go on Lavelle Hawkins. There it is. And that's seven on seven. He's holding on to Jeremy Payton. Almost took his pads off. And Payton probably would have had a better shot at making that play, I would imagine, if Hawkins wasn't holding him. But a nice play by Cal faking the fire screen to one side and then coming back around with the middle screen. That's an old West Coast offense play, and Jeff Tedford has had that in the playbook for a long time. That is not his new offensive coordinator's play. They haven't shown a lot of that spread, as you mentioned. Well, once you have control of the game, why show it to everybody? I mean, that's your wrinkle this year. You have control of the game, why show it? You give it to Forsett. Forsett has some room, and Forsett is going to be dragged down short of the first down, but it will put the Bears in field goal range. Gorsett picks up 25. And this is why I really like this kid, Justin Forsett. They call him Texas in high school. They call him the truth. He's from Arlington, Texas. He's the son of a preacher man. That's, That's right the only is. one that could ever move me. I really <laughs> enjoy watching him play because when he gets on the perimeter, he just attacks and eats up yardage. He's not a big kid, but he is a great back. Last year, Barry, they couldn't find him an extra yard. 999. Well, the Bears will try a field goal, I believe, when we come back, unless Nate Longshore can convince his coach to go for it. 8.26 remaining in the game. The Bears lead it by 21, 42 to 21. A tradition of courage, a tradition of character, a tradition. Well, when the weather's like this, I mean, it's hard to imagine a more beautiful place, isn't it? Where else? Bears have decided to go for it here. They're going to go with the trips left for set the lone setback. They need a yard. And now we have whistles blow. I don't see a flag. Arizona State's called timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. Let our spotter Dick Quinlan heal after I poked him in the eye with his binoculars. Easy. We're coming back. What do you value? Do you value the environment? Thousand and change on hand at Memorial Stadium. The Bears have a fourth down and a yard. 
And they will go for it here on fourth and a yard. Not unusual. We thought Jeff Tepper might do that earlier, right at about midfield. Made a liar out of me then, so. Didn't say anything this time, but this is in character. Same trips formation they came out with before Arizona State called a timeout. Well, they like to run to the short side of the field in this situation. Well, they, they don't this time. And Corsett lost the football. He had the whole field. <laughs> lost the football. And that's a case of thinking where you're going before you get it in your hands. Well, you got to raise your head up and look at the field. But Forsett just a split second early raising his head up. And let me tell you, he got punished by Travis Gaithel. Travis Gaithel in this series, two huge hits. Forsett never really had control of that football. And Gaithel coming around and putting a pretty mean hit on Forsett, adding insult to the injury. And a very nice break by Arizona State. But can they make something out of it? We'll see. I don't know. They, they took a touchdown away from California right there. The Bears took it away from themselves. And this time, the interception is made by Pimentello. Takes it into the end zone for a score. What a play that was. Flag is down. That's probably going to be an excessive celebration. I mean, that's a tough play. That is a very difficult play. Mickey Pimentel coming in. Arizona State trying to run a screen to the back. It went for a touchdown the first time they tried it. This time, not happening. It's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct on Pimentel. We did a strange kind of dive into the end zone. Not a very pretty. If you're going to get no. penalized, yeah, I mean, make do it something good. cool. And I'll tell you what, that's not cool. Is it? When, it, when a coach has you by the face mask, yeah. generally speaking, that's not a pep You talk. just had the greatest play of your career, and you go to the sideline, and the coach grabs you by the face mask. At least he's got the visor on, so the guy's not spitting his eyes. <laughs> but Mickey Pimentel making a great play in his senior year. Two pass breakups, but that was a huge pass breakup. And then an interception, and Rudy Carpenter, the nightmare continues. I think Freddy Krueger's going to come out of the 50-yard line here in a second. So Schneider will try to convert second defensive touchdown of the day by the Bears. They also have a special teams touchdown, and they now lead it 49 to 21. Eight minutes, three seconds left. I'm just saying, girl, I am made to order. <laughs> what? What's going on? First you're selling yourself for a buck, and now this? Stop treating me like I'm on the kids' menu. Eight minutes, three seconds remaining to be played. Now they'll assess that penalty on this kick. And Tom Schneider will uh, kick it at his 20-yard line. The guys on the kickoff team have to run extra because of Mickey Pimentel. But they'll take it because they got seven. So Schneider hits this one. It's a pretty good, actually. And it's going to be Richardson at the seven-yard line. Richardson. He'll stop by the first man. Good open field tackle on time by Randy Bundy. He's made a couple of good plays on special teams. Well, here's the play that really changed the game so far as the California Golden Bears are concerned. Pimentel makes the play, bats the ball, takes it back. But for California, this is a big change. And that's our Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance. Pontiac with award the school with today's Pontiac game-changing performance, $1,000 to his general scholarship fund. Today's Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance brought to you by your local Pontiac dealer. It's going today. Check out the all-new Pontiac showroom. Pontiac, designed for action. Give this time is to DeWitty. And DeWitty gets it across the 31-yard line. Picks up about five, a little short of five on first down. Dimitri Nance also in the game now for Arizona State. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com, your online source for savings on everything from video games to big screen TVs. Overstock.com. Nance, the lone setback, he gets the call. And Nance will be stopped right about at the first line marker. I think he's going to get this. Nance, a freshman out of Euless, Texas. And I'm sure Arizona State fans are thinking, Great things happen for us on offense in this football game when Ryan Torian Terrain had the ball. But not great things happened when Rudy Carpenter was dropping back to pass. Interceptions, a few of them, and, and a couple bad plays, a couple things that went for touchdowns and a couple missed throws. Rudy Carpenter has got a lot to do, a lot of work to do to shore this up going into the Pac-10 season. And right now, Arizona State's run game looks pretty good. 
Carpenter straight back. This time he does have time, and he throws, and the catch is made by Miller. Zach Miller, only his second catch of the game. And that's not enough. That's no. just not enough for Zach Miller. Zach Miller's a guy that's got to have eight or nine catches in a game for your passing game to be working. And the one thing we really noticed about Arizona State on offense, they don't have the big play ability right now at wide receiver. They had one big play for Terry Richardson. Again, Rudy Burgess, who used to be a tailback, who used to be a corner, who's now a wide receiver, is home in Arizona watching with a neck injury. And these guys need somebody to step up at wide receiver and make a big play. They just don't have it right now. Lewis comes to the near side, a draw play this time, and DeWitty is going to get it going in the right direction, down about the 43-yard line. Sean DeWitty, the sophomore out of Colorado Springs. And let's take a look now at our Cooper Tires defensive player of the game. It's a no-brainer here, P. Oh, it's got to be Damian Hughes. Two interceptions, locking down that side, baiting Rudy Carpenter, making tackles, physical play. Damian Hughes, I truly believe after seeing this game and watching him, not only is a big time NFL corner, but he is the finest corner right now in the country flank. High praise. Oh, and there is a pick by Sipquan Thompson. Big time play and not a good throw by Carpenter. We'd like to have that one back, but I'll tell you what, it was a great catch by Thompson. And you can't help but feel a little bit for Rudy Carpenter just standing on the A of the Cal. That's his fourth pick of the day with his hands on his hips, just standing there, kind of staring off into the distance, wondering what happened to the promise of this football game. And that was a beautiful play by Sid Quan Thompson. Never really needed the other hand. And look at Rudy Carpenter. He knows he missed the throw, but he can't believe that Sid Kwan came down with it with that beautiful, beautiful interception. And now he's shaking those dreads for the people of the city. Marcus O'Keith is a running back from California. Now, and you know what? They don't drop off a whole lot with no. Marcus O'Keith. Here is O'Keefe. And O'Keefe will get it going across the 40, all the way to 43 yard line. Nice run by Marcus. We've been talking about Marcus O'Keefe off the air. I mean, here's a guy who's just in the wrong place at the wrong time, considering playing time here at Cal. Marshawn Lynch, Justin Forsett, two of the best backs in the Pac-10. O'Keefe would be a thousand yard rusher for most Pac-10 teams. But when you have great players in front of you, you have to wait your turn. And he's been here a long time. He's been a senior and he's always been kind of a backup guy, but a very reliable guy and a guy they're not afraid to give the ball to. No, when he plays, he's productive. He's had a couple of hundred yard games in his career at Cal. And that time, just miscommunication. I think it was going to be the fullback who was supposed to get that, but uh, Nate Longshore probably will have a little chat with Byron Storr. And uh, Longshore, as you can see, four touchdowns on offense, all four passing plays. He scored a couple of defensive touchdowns. And a punt return, an 80 yarder by Deshaun Jackson. Joe Ayub is uh, going to be the quarterback now for the Bears as uh, Jeff Tedford thinking this one is in the bank with fun it is with four minutes and 17 seconds remaining. Ayub gives it to O'Keefe and O'Keefe will be short of the first down. Travis Gaithel makes the tackle and Gaithel uh, even though he hasn't played a lot of minutes has been productive when he has played. Yeah he's been all over the field delivering a lot of blows. You look at these two quarterbacks in the football game Nate Longshore and Rudy Carpenter. These are both guys from Southern California. Nate Longshore from Canyon Country. Rudy Carpenter finished up at Westlake High, both in, both in Southern California. They know each other, they're friends, they talk sometimes on the phone, so I'm sure they'll have some words for each other, but just opposite sides of the spectrum as far as performance goes today between the two guys. Well, Larson hits this one pretty good too. And a fair catch called by McGay Hay at the seven. College Football Saturday is presented by Kyocera Wireless. Take your texting to the next level with the new Kyocera Strobe. Kyocera Wireless reminds you to dial responsibly. And brought to you in part by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. By Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. And by Wrangler, makers of Wrangler five-star premium quality denim jeans. Well, Danny Sullivan is uh, now going to be the quarterback for Arizona State as time ticks down, 329 left in the game. And the Bears with a comfortable 28-point lead. And we're going to get whistles and flags and all that stuff. 
Danny Sullivan for the Bay Area up here does not have any relation to a race car driver. No. Though many would think. Name. But his yeah. uncle was a very famous coach. His uncle is uh, Carol Williams. Yep. Famous coach of the Santa Clara Mustangs back Broncos. in the day. Broncos. Broncos. The Broncos? That's yes. a horse. Come on, give me a break. So is a Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Carroll still around, former athletic director at Santa Clara as well. It was that was Robert Peel, who made a little amends for blown coverage a little bit earlier that resulted in an ASU touchdown. This has been a very physical Pac-10 football game. We've seen a lot of big hits. Yeah. Bernard Hicks also got a piece of the runner. But Robert Peel, the one that delivered the blow. Second down and 10. And again, this time it's the Nance again. Nothing doing. Down on the bottom of that one was Rulon Davis. Davis, no small guy, 6'5", 275. He played a, a year of JC ball, as you said, at Mount Sac. Three years in the Marine Corps, a mature individual. Do the eye black things really help you when they're vertical I, like I that? don't think so. Maybe when you're laying on the ground. <laughs> As it gave once again to Nance, and Nance gets in the room this time. He's going to get the first down. Brought down by Bernard Hicks. And the clock continues to tick at 147. And we said one of these teams is going to leave here today, and most of their BCS hopes will be basically squashed. And right now, it's the Sun Devils. And they felt like they could really be in the Rose Bowl this year, and they could still win all their games. This is a very good football team and a team with a lot of good players, but the way Cal's looking right now, I think they're starting to get their mojo working after that bad loss versus Tennessee to start the season. Well, according to Jeff Tetford, they came back the next week and played well against Minnesota. At Portland State, I realize they're a 1AA team, but very good defensive team and will will do well in, in 1AA. I suspect they will be in the playoffs. So it'll be second down and eight. Let's see if Sullivan puts it up for the first time. Yep, and give it ahead to Jackson again. Jackson will get to the 24. Let's take a look. Uh, rather, it was Nance on the carry. Let's take a look at our Kyocera call of the game to Sean Jackson. Eight yard touchdown catch. Also had an 80 yard punt return, which was a thing of beauty. So, a big day for Deshaun Jackson. And it looks like Cal right now is really comfortable within their own skin. They have bona fide superstars on offense, they have a real All American corner in Damian Hughes. Desmond Bishop is a very good representative and leader of this defense. Cal looks like a team in the Pac-10 right now that's for real, and they've really put a stamp on it today, especially in the first half of this football game. And that is going to do it as uh, the Arizona State Sun Devils score first but finish last as the Cal Bears come roaring back. 49-21, they win it. No offensive touchdowns for the second week in a row for the Bears in the second half, but it doesn't matter. They win it 49 to 21, and as you said, on both sides of the ball, a dominant win. Overall, they managed the game very well. Zero penalties in the first half. Nate Longshore looking really comfortable, looking like a poised quarterback, and really dropping back and finding his people, finding Deshaun Jackson, finding Jordan and Hawkins. When you got Marshawn Lynch and Forsett in the backfield, what else could you ask for offensively? And Cal, their strength still, I believe, is on the defensive side of the ball. And this is a team that, after that hiccup in the first game, really looks like they can do some damage. You know, and Sid Quan Thompson is a guy, yeah, he made that pick. And he looked a little bit shaky at times in the first half, but you could almost see him get his legs as this game went on. These guys are going to improve throughout the season, and you hope the same for Arizona State. But Rudy Carpenter definitely taking a step backwards today. ASU really uh, crippled on the offensive line as Carnahan went down near the end of the first half. Uh, Berg was already down and not playing at all. So they do have some excuses in the offensive area.
area, but California also uh, was banged up a little bit. Andrew Cameron, normally their starting left tackle, did not play at all, and because he didn't play, it was temper time. It was temper time, and the people in the crowd, especially Jim Watson, very pleased with temper time. Cows for real, Barry. Well, that's a wrap for us from here in Berkeley. Once more, the final score, California 49, ASU 21. A reminder to stay tuned, as most of you will see South Florida taking on Kansas. That's coming up next. Meanwhile, for Petros Papadakis and Jim Watson, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long, everybody. And we thank you for watching College Football Saturday right here on FSN. 49-21, Bears win. Head over to Dave & Buster's for the power